Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Tell us about Final it. Final Fantasy VIII Remaster yeah. and Red Dead Redemption 2. You son of a Shame! Shame, Nolan! <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Dicey Dungeon, bitch? Oh, wait, maybe I mean, back I up a little a bit. Like, let's go three yeah, minutes. I want to play more. I finished the game, and now I'm on, like, the... Uh, there we go. Al- the alternate episodes dungeons. or whatever? Yeah, the episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but those are fucking hard, man. Crispy, play what you want to play. Just tell us about well, it. I, I, am. <laughs> I need a friend for my board crew, okay? What are we looking at, uh, Chris? Hey, Chris? I'm sure Ed. Yeah, half the world is playing WoW Classic. And you know what? Right I'm sure Ed. I don't want to fucking hear it. I'm that. sure Ed is one of them. Point. That's a good point. Those Ed, people Ed, are... Ed, Ed couldn't be here I'm last week. I'm not even going to install add ons. Ed, Ed said he couldn't be here last week because he was moving. No quest tracker for me. I'm pure. Yeah. I'm bet, so, I bet Ed was. On. People acting like they didn't have that shit back in wa- yeah. vanilla I, I People like making a concerted effort to make Baron's chat a thing again. Like, fuck you. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Baron Chat don't... back in the day was notorious for being nope toxic. Yeah, I mean it was like <coughs> not, I, not even toxic, but just like I mean definitely toxic, but also Blech. weird. Yeah, like, it was like a meme. So now everyone, of course, back then it was in, called in a WoW Vanilla has been like going into Baron's chat oh, you guys and like trying to make it as weird control. as possible take the reins yeah yeah seriously we, we've actually had good video this is game like content. five minutes into the podcast oh shit no this is like 30 minutes in we just started recording five we minutes we have been ago. recording we could just say fuck it and make this the show everything we've talked about up to this point since we sat down is like good for a podcast brad everything we talk about is good for a podcast Ooh. everything every word that comes out of our mouths all right you know what let's officially start the show especially hey, when we say the word butthole Butthole. Quality podcast material. Anybody else want to say butthole before we start? Butthole. <laughs> now I kind of want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> butthole. <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to 4 Player Podcast. This is episode 614. It is September 12th, 2019. Jets. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Nick Henderson. To my right is Brad Simons. Hello. Nolan Hedstrom. How's it going, everybody? Who should also turn on the fifth mic for a second. Christopher Guthridge. Hello. And, of course, on the fifth mic, our video producer, Christopher Davis. Good evening. All right. We are here. I'm not sure where I'm starting the editing of this podcast, but we may or may not have been... Did you just do that to him again? No, his mic's not even plugged in. (laughs) Uh, Oh, that's... That was actually pretty funny. <laughs> I had muted it, and I looked over at Audacity, and I'm like, it barely even moved. And I look at the mic, and there's just nothing plugged into it. <laughs> Let's uh, take our word for it. He is here. <laughs> I am I swear to you, I'm not lying. Um, okay, I do want to mention real quick that I, I, I mentioned in the tweet that we were going to hopefully have some new equipment tonight to test out, courtesy of our patrons and our Twitch subscribers. Unfortunately, that equipment did not arrive on time, so we are not using it tonight. It'll have to be next week, but... We did make a purchase this week. We bought some new headphones, a new splitter, and some new equipment that will hopefully help us keep our audio levels a little bit more in check during the show on a weekly basis. So I want to go ahead and say thank you to our subscribers on Twitch and our supporters on Patreon. Hey, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. You you have made it possible. And by the way, quick update. We are nine... Patreon pledges away from doing another project. What? Dude, that's less than ten. That. Yeah, that is a fact. Yes, wow. it is less than ten. We are we need nine more, and that doesn't matter if you want to support us at one dollar a month or three dollars a month. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's a it's a new pledge, and it goes towards the total. We're trying to hit one hundred and fifty. When we do that, we will announce and and plan our next Project M event. Will be like a big hefty like twenty four hour stream where we race through a game we haven't announced yet, but we will beefy. We will announce that. With those details, as soon as one, we figure them out. <laughs> Which, believe us, we're ha- at this point we're having conversations weekly about it, and uh, and we'll. I-, I think at this point we'll be able to do it before the end of the year. So, if you want to support us on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Four Players, where you- where you can do that, 
Uh, I want to say welcome to our new patrons. Uh, Scuderia. Scuderia. That's, sure, why not? Yeah. Scuderia. Probably not. Probably Scuderia. Scuderia. Okay. It's, hmm. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Henry B. Thank you, Henry B. Henry Belmont? And... Yeah. No. No, sorry. I, I had to think about that for a second, and then I realized he actually did write his full last gotcha. name out, and it's definitely Thanks, not Henry. Belmont. Uh, and River Plus A? Yeah. No, yeah, that's a person. River Plusa. River Plusa. Been a, been a member of our yep. community for a while now. Oh, and Thorax. Oh, I can't remember if I mentioned Thorax last week. What day is this? The 12th? Yeah, so River Plus A... Henry B. and Scuderia, thank you very much for supporting us on Patreon. Um, I want to start the show out, as usual, by reading some feedback from our last episode. Do it, I dare you. I didn't even come close to forgetting this time. I'm proud of myself. Uh, of course, we started every show. We, we read feedback from the last episode. If you have anything you want to chime in or contribute tonight, just go to 4 and leave a comment on the, episode for, on the post for this episode, and we'll read it next week. Uh, Grab a Beer says... Sorry about the rant about control last week. Guess I grabbed one too many beers before going off in the comment section. I don't think that was much of a rant. It was more of just talking about how much he was enjoying control, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, and how, or no, he was talking about the technical issues, which are definitely a thing. Um, I will say that I did finish Control the day before the new patch was released. It really is an amazing game, and I look forward to replaying it sometime in the next few years with the added improvements. I haven't heard too much post patch. How did, how's is it the doing on the come PS? Out? The patch for consoles has come out. So I don't know. If, the PS4 one has, but yes. not the Xbox PC one. I I don't know. Actually, I think all three of them. Maybe someone in chat. I think all three consoles have been patched this or platforms have been patched at this point. But um, how's the PS plebe doing? That is the that is the big question. I I know it's made pretty dramatic improvements on the on the second tier consoles, but I'm not sure about the OGs. Man, you know. Two weeks ago, I was on the show. We talked about that game. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's not great. The like the visual hitching isn't great, but it doesn't bother me." I went home, and the next day, I was like, "I'm gonna play some Control." Booted it up for five minutes, and then was like, "No, nope. crispy." Been, haven't been back since. You're wow, because because of the technical yeah, issues. Yeah, it's like ever since we talked about it, like I can't, I can't like it's it's bad. I can't get over it. That is really weird. Is my. <laughs> Is my mic on? Yeah. We're okay, all sorry. On. I saw a big. Every, everything's good. I saw a big Every, long yeah, yeah, yeah. flat thing. Anyways, um, you should go back and finish that if you or try the patch at least and see if it helps. I still want to play that. I have not really. There's a lot of stuff out. Some somebody in the community Brad, reach out to us. Let us know how the patch is. Brad would be playing it, but he has a lot of self control. Mm. It's gonna be one of those nights. All right, buckle up, guys. Uh, Thorax, who is a new patron. Says, uh, really cool that a member of the community had a video game themed wedding. Maybe Nick can have an Alan Wake or Dexter theme for his wedding. Do both. There we go. Bride side and groom side. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. We'll do both. That is terrible. Oh, man. I can't, I can't wait to tell people about one, that wedding one, for years to come. <laughs> one side's all going to have, like, flashlights, and the other one's all going to have, like, knives and stuff. It's, syringes. like, in the dark, but everything's yeah. covered in blood. Yeah. No, the bride side's going to be the mummy. That's true. The that is. That is true. I am apparently going to a mummy movie party now. That's a thing that's happening. Dope. I'm excited, though. I'm sure it's going to be cool. Those are always fun. Yeah, they are fun. Um, <laughs> I like Venom PB. What when, do you say? When Nick dies, he can have an Alan Wake. Damn. <laughs> ah, that's good. Damn. That's Got clever. Uh, and our last comment this week comes from Slop Dog. He says, Ho- honored that my crunch quote unquote crunchy jess got the episode title made my week mm-hmm. um brad's been slowly winning me over getting fell seal Ooh. fell seal arbiter's mark thank you uh he's uh, been getting a hankering to play final fantasy tactics skin to the point wanting of wanting to purchase a psp but i just might try out fell seal and said instead um on the euro trip idea it would be so awesome to see you guys romping around in europe or even seeing a video of you guys touring the U.S. would be a delight. Touring the U.S. Road trip. Tour. Man, I think we're going to need a few more patrons before we can consider touring the United At States. At least but five more. That would be a great Somewhere way. Somewhere between five and a thousand. I think I think that would be awesome, and it would be a great way to ensure that we'd never do this podcast again. <laughs> there we, <go. laughs> we could uh, We could do it on a much smaller scale and do a tour of Austin. Yeah. That's tour of Texas. 
Isn't that which also is pretty big. isn't that also kind of lame? which is pretty big and boring and a lot of it is boring a lot of it's very lame. Um, he sorry he has a few more things. He said the highlight of the show for me was the way Nick said, "Bitch, I'd never even been to Europe." Did I say that? Yes, you did. Uh, I get it out of my head and I love using it for my own. I can't get it out of my head and I love using it for my own entertainment. Uh, good on you guys for answering that late question from that brand new patron. Blessed courtesy from the four PP boys. Yeah, you're very welcome. And Brad, please, please, please. Call back and thank that country bumpkin, <laughs> Jesus, for saving that PS3 from falling please, into more nefarious please, hands. Please, 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 oh, please say yes, yes, yes. The fuck are you what talking are you, about? What is going are you on right a now? Stroke? <laughs> <laughs> Brad, Brad, Brad's having a stroke live on the podcast. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks. I th- thanks. Mm. Is thanks, he actually having thanks. a medical issue? In right two now? more patrons, we'll buy a thank ball for gag saying, for Yes, yes, yes. Watch us like set that as like like when we get 170 patrons, we'll get a ball gag that Brad has to wear in every episode. Like oh. we'll hit that, we'll hit that hey, so fast. Hey, oh. let's not fight. It's not right. I ball gag it like is. the time you took my bouncy ball and threw it hard. On the kitchen wall. By the end of the year, Brad's basically ga- basically gonna be the gimp full. from uh, No, Pulp I did. Yes, you did. Okay, what are you doing, Brad? <laughs> sorry, is- sorry, sorry, sorry. This is my life. This is why I've only played a few hours of Astral Chain. Is this like which, something you've been watching? Which show him? was this? Oh, this is Word Party. Oh, of Word course. Party. Yeah. On Netflix. Yeah, I'm glad. Totes. I think that's. A, I'm pretty sure that's a reference most of us here are not gonna. Not gonna catch, but thank you for. Uh, Have you never seen Word Party, Nick? Come on! I know. Apparently, I've been doing it wrong. Has anybody seen anything cool lately? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, nothing. I'm crispy, pretty, crispy. I'm, you gotta see. I've seen something cool, right? I'm pretty sure I have. Reach deep, deep in there. But I've seen something cool. I watched that Amazing Jonathan documentary. I watched the that too. Is that, that is the, very strange. The, Ama- uh, like not not the one on YouTube called Amazing, which I did watch some of that, but the other one that is called Jonathan. The Wait, untitled is the Amazing one on YouTube Jonathan. also a documentary? Yes, and it's the one that's going on that they're shooting at the time. Okay, okay. so I don't know if I oh, like the this Amazing movie. Jonathan is a comedian magician who was really popular in the late eighties and the nineties. Okay, and he retired in the early two thousands because he was like dying. They said he had like a year to live, but mm-hmm. that was like six years ago. He's still. Alive, but through sick. magic, yeah, probably. No, uh, that's tasteless. Um, and somebody did a documentary about him and his career and his life, and then somebody else did a documentary about trying to do a documentary about him, and it's fucking bizarre. Yeah, I like it's just it. a really weird story. Yeah, like you, you should. It's on, on Hulu. There's it's one on Hulu. Hulu, and there's a second one on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. What is this fire? I watched festival? the one on YouTube. Yeah, it it is kind of like that. It's like are this, they both good? Uh, the, the, one the one on YouTube's on just kind of like it's it's fine. It's just like fluff. It's like. very strange. Yeah, the but one that I kept the, wondering if it was a mockumentary like multiple times throughout the course. It's of the fucking movie. weird. It's yeah. really weird, and it it like yeah, which it might still be. There's like this may, maybe this is a whole Andy Kaufman thing going on here. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't really like answer that. <laughs> no, <laughs> not e- no. Not even remotely. It's weird. Uh, Anything else? The only Brad? thing I've watched recently is Claire Saffritz make some peanut M and M's. I've watched a lot of Princess and the Frog. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, with Henry. No, just by myself. <laughs> hey, wa- hey, watching it hey, over and over don't again. Hate, don't hate. I watched Frozen for the first time this past Frozen's week. Frozen's a great movie. All by myself. I'm not hating. What? Uh. I- I think the movie's okay. The songs are really good. I like the one that uh, Keith David sings. Oh, the, yeah. The, uh, what, how's it go? I are got we, are friends we on the other Fro- side. Princess and the Frog? Yeah. Keith David's in the movie. Yeah, the one gotcha. in okay, New I Orleans. Follow that. I follow. I've also been watching uh, Hunter Hunter for the first time. The anime? Isn't that you the one that the community last member week. recommended? Maybe. I don't know. We, yeah, you did mention that last Ooh. week. I'm still watching it. There's a shit ton of well, episodes. Well, finish it, Nolan. There's like 150 episodes. Really? I'm watched, on like episode 40. I watched It Chapter 2 last night. How was that? Long. <laughs> Who decided <laughs> it's a good idea to make a three-hour horror movie? Why did you thing? ask how was here's, that instead of how was it? No, here's how, here's the thing. Here's the thing. That movie's good. I mean, I think it's pretty good. You're right. If you like you the first me. one, I think it's a safe bet you like the second one. The, pro- the thing like that, the that shocked one. me and the reason why that movie's three hours long 
Damn, it's, I didn't know so, it was three hours long. That's it's weird. 170 minutes. It's weird for a horror movie. I know. Right? It's so I was I read the book fairly recently. I remember while I was reading the book and I was getting towards the end of it, and I was like, it starts to get real Stephen King yeah. on you. Yeah. And I was every time I was like going from chapter to chapter, going, Well, they're definitely not gonna do that in the movie. They're definitely not gonna do that in the movie. That's just too fucking weird. Uh-huh. They do all that shit in the movie. Like all the shit that I assume they would have yanked out and rewritten yeah. is in the movie. Huh. With the exception of like one or two things. Like the weird orgy thing, obviously. Yeah, happen. but I was gonna. Ask. The weird orgy thing doesn't happen, and yeah. then there's the thing with the giant turtle doesn't happen. Oh, yeah. Well, pretty much everything yeah. else in that the, book is fair game. The giant turtle, how do you not do it? There's a lot of teases of the turtle, but uh. the turtle never shows up. Do At one ever, point, is one of the kids like, "Look at that big turtle." Do no. they ever make oblique reference to Dick Halloran from The Shining? Ooh. Yes, yeah. they do. Yes, they act- he's he's referenced in the book. Yeah. Okay. It's uh. What are we even talking about? I video know. game it's podcast. Pretty good. Sorry, I know video game. We haven't, you know, yeah, catch up good. on stuff. It's We're watching stuff. I'm also on the last movie. season of The West Wing, and I'm sad. I'm very, Ooh. very sad. Oh, but you can just jump into the newsroom. I've already watched the newsroom. No, the don't watch. The newsroom. I've already done it. It's too late. <laughs> that show is stupid. Someone what? posted a, a clip on Twitter. That, that seen show it. is so good. I've never no, seen it. So not. someone posted a, a clip on Twitter. Fuck you. Where and I'm pretty sure Crispy retweeted that today. Oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. that the one I saw? What is the, this? The Osama bin Laden one. The Osama yeah. bin Laden one. Dude, people have been memeing that all day. They, they have the best one I saw was like a four panel of like that scene, but in like instead of him looking at the captain stripes and his badge. It was like him looking at Commander Riker from Star Trek, like the pips and then the bad and then the beard. <laughs> if you like Newsroom, you should definitely go back and watch the I, West Wing. I've seen oh. not all of the West Wing, but I've seen the West Wing. Yes, I'm familiar with Aaron Sorkin's work. Thank you. I am hopelessly I've never in seen Newsroom. Hopelessly, you know, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the Newsroom. That I think that particular scene is maybe an exception. Dude, no, you should see the one where that same character tells a girl who was raped that she shouldn't, like, pursue wow. accusations well, I don't remember, against that guy. I don't remember that. It's been a while, yeah. but, you know, the West, just say fuck it, just watch There's the West. There's literally, like, a whole scene where she's just, where he's just like, yeah, but, like, what if he's innocent? There's probably moments like that in the West Wing, but, Ooh, like, yeah, probably. maybe, I guess, there's, like, Oh, I well, guess a more like oh. majestic quality to the West. Well, no, the, there's nothing ex- quite yeah, as like, yeah. dubious as that. But there's like lots of moments where they like, like the pilot they obviously hands. make jokes or or like sexual like. No, like, no, no, and, no, like, no, no, I'm talking about like like, hold on. like the real, pilot. Real quick, real there's quick, like, Brad. Real quick, I just do want to say that when when we did get Osama. We one got, of my, one of my best friends from high school texted me, but he didn't realize I had just changed my number. And so he was like, dude, we got him. And like this other person was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he was like, is this Nolan? And he was like, no. And he's like, oh, we got Osama bin Laden. He's like, what, dude, that's awesome. And it's just this random exchange between these two people and this guy getting excited. It's like texting your number neighbor and telling him we got Osama. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Like, yeah. But like there's Uh, moments like that in the West Wing, but I feel like maybe they... Aaron Sorkin's writing was a little tighter back then, maybe. Although it, well, that, it's and still it's went... also not tied to like real world political That's events true, that affected real people's lives That's that true. they're just kind of like using for his TV show. That's true. <laughs> you know, like... I didn't mean to get us on an Aaron Sorkin <laughs> uh, rabbit hole here. Let's 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 bring it back over. Let's talk about video games. Uh, I, I do want to mention. Uh, I think I don't think I've pimped Discord yet. You've not. Discord.gg slash four player. If you have no idea what the fuck we're talking about, the clip from <laughs> the newsroom that Crispy was just talking about is in the TV channel right now. Oh, so, it's pretty good. You should watch. Discord.gg slash four player. Go check it out. There's a lot of a lot of. I also made some handy gifts from that clip too. So. You made yeah. gifts? Yeah, those gifts that are in there. Are the I haven't I been in the TV oh, channel. Those are today. handmade gifts. Handmade. Wow. At work. Don't tell my boss. <laughs> Oh man! All right, you know it might have been the direction. Like, I don't know. It's just fucking weird. The zooming in on the it's fucking the weird. Pill, yeah. What like, if it had done like a comical zoom in, like where it's like it's like it's the, it's a little yeah. Thing. I don't know. It's just weird. We are so off topic. Yeah. We have lost we're, so many like new listeners. Yeah, we're in the weeds here. Yeah, this video is games. a uh, Aaron Sorkin podcast now. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Fucking video games. Brad, first game, Brad. Why don't you hit, why don't you start us off with Astral Chain? I feel like we're a little late to the party on that one. Um, we did, it's been out for over a week, and we didn't talk about it last week because sure. we none of us well, played it. Well, I yet. just got it, and un- unfortunately, I haven't played like 
more i mean that much i don't know i mean i haven't fine i haven't played a ton of well, Greedfall yet but i'm gonna talk about it yeah uh, but, but i think that's sort of you're fired been, been somewhat here. problematic uh as far as how i've been warming up to the game i feel like it's a game that is structured in such a way where i need to play a lot more i need to get further and i need to start unlocking like the cool shit that you see in a lot of platinum yeah. action games um, and I, I'm sort of just now getting to some of the, uh, I'm just not, I feel like I'm just now getting to some of the cool shit and, um, this is a very weird game. So th- this is, I believe this game is weird for a platinum game because uh, most of their games are pretty weird. Well, sure. But like, but like, okay. So you think of like Bayonetta or Vanquish or like Metal Gear Rising. That's mm-hmm. one type of game, right? But then you think of like Nier Automata and that's like a different game, right? Yes. And, very- and, and, th- and this game is directed by like. Sort of like the lead on that, not Yoko Taro, but like you know the person in charge of like I guess the gameplay and stuff, right? Yeah. And this kind of feels a little bit like that in terms of um, just how combat isn't like the sole focus. Yeah. And and it, it's surprising because I wasn't expecting that from Astral Chain. I expected more of you know like Bayonetta, right? But with futuristic like combat, cops. combat, 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 and not a whole lot. Yeah, with like of that. Neo Tokyo style, like future cops and stuff. Yeah. Which I don't have my cop outfit on because you know, whatever. I like this, this outfit. one's better. You can you can change your outfits and tweak all that stuff and get cool new hairstyles and shit. And I, you can change your hairstyles. Yeah, yeah. It, um, yeah. Because you sort of pick and create your character at the very beginning. And uh, then you get a lot of customization and stuff. Um, so, like, in terms of, like, mechanics and combat, uh, it starts off, like, super simple. You know, you, you, you're you kind of, you know... Can, oh, by the way, I just slingshot that dude back with my chain. Dude, it's okay, like Red, that's what I thought. Like Red just, Rover. I thought yeah. that's what I was witnessing there. I was like, there's no way that's what's happening. Yeah, that, that is what happened. So, so no. like, I guess the main gameplay hook of this game is that you kind of have... Like a persona, a JoJo stand, whatever you want to call it, uh, you 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 have this demon that's chained to you, and you fight with it, you combo with it, you do cool Red Rover moves with it. Yes. Do you ever use like your toe hooks to take down like an ATAT with your chain? Uh, well, so you do kind of do that, right? You 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 wrap the ch- you so when you. The way combat works is you, you press the right uh, trigger and that's sort of like your combat moves, right? And the left trigger is controls all your chained uh, demon uh, stuff, right? Um, and But you can hold down that button and actually control where he goes with the right analog stick. And you might see me do it here. Um, actually, I'm going to go into like a little Metal Gear Rising thing and cut the chain between these two things that are oh, make, making shit. making them like invulnerable. But... Um, um, and then, and then you can wrap your you you can, you can take control over the demon and c- encircle the enemy and actually chain them and it freezes them and you can kind of r- rush in and like combo them and just kind of wail on them. At first, it was like super super simple. I'm finally getting some like cool maneuvers and like techniques that seems like it might kind of freshen it up, uh, which is nice. But that I you know I'm probably like 20% into a game where there's probably going to be a whole lot more going on like you get a lot of more demons and types of demons and stuff and I was surprised by just sort of roaming around the environment doing like side quests uh, so I yes you saw what I just did there that is really cool actually um um so, so by roaming around the environment sort of outside of like combat scenarios because you do a lot of you're a cop you do it and you do like a lot of like detective work I guess you're like some sort of futuristic detective and um, some sort of futuristic yeah detective. well you're, like you're you're, you're trying to uh, take care of like the this demon invasion threat and what you do is you sort of enslave them and fight with them they fight for you um, they're demons no one. They're, they're demons. Actually, you know, it's the kind of thing where you expect in this fiction that they're probably going to eventually deal with the fact that you're enslaving them, and that's probably, like, not cool. So there you go. Yeah, I just wrapped that get dude. him. But we haven't gotten there yet. I'm still really early. Um, but, yeah. So so the combat seems cool. It seems like there's some potential. It starts out really slow. Um, and, and the reason, I guess, it feels pace slow is because this is not a straight-up combat game. You spend a lot of time out of combat, roaming around your sort of, like, police, futuristic, like, police headquarters, doing side quests. You, Do you roam you, the you, city or you, just the headquarters? No, no. You, you also go into the city and you investigate, like, crimes that are caused by, like, these demons. Or you're just trying to find out, okay, it looks like there's a, a demon attack in this area. Let's see if we can, like, through 
through all these like mechanics of like uh, you know all kinds of mechanics that you see in, in any sort of game where modern game where you're like investigating stuff you're trying to track the threat follow the threat go into like you know these little rifts and then you know do a bunch of combat but you spend Are those a lot of side time stories of like interesting well, well we'll get to that actually uh, let, let me answer Nolan's question when you're out in the city roaming around with your demon do you ever have to pick up its poop uh no you don't but that, that would be interesting demons don't poop um, Nolan. So they don't have buttholes. They, they don't do. have buttholes. Why I'm would pretty sure they're only buttholes. You, Why would demons you, have buttholes? You do they're use your demon a lot for like buttholes. platforming and stuff. So you can't jump into this uh, jump in this game. You move your demon to a point, and then you can sort of like jump to the demon. Mm -hmm. And they've sort of been like mixing it up. Like there's another game with that's actual like, like that. platforming mechanics and stuff. There's um, something I can't remember. It, that does sound familiar. Yeah. yeah. It, it seems like there's going to be a lot of really interesting interactions, like platforming and puzzly type stuff, with you know these demon mechanics, which is cool. It's a cool hook, uh, I guess. No pun intended. Um, but I will say, because it's paced that way, you you'd want the story to be like really good. You you'd want the stuff outside of combat to be really good. And there's definitely sort of a cool vibe to it and a style. Like just walking around your headquarters is just. Really cool, cool music plays. I mean, the everything whole game looks flashy. And everything, like, everything stylish. looks really cool. You know, at, what do you, what do you at collect first, in there? At first, they're like red crystal gems, oh, okay. like upgrade stuff. I don't okay, know, gotcha. but only like my demon can collect them. I don't really know. Um, but uh, so so like so you saw when the enemy shot a beam towards me. Mm -hmm. That 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 tells me it was gonna like rush in that direction, and that's when I know I can like create a barrier to try to like fling them back you know what i mean like yeah. the red rover thing uh, anyways uh so 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 I'm, I'm sort of at odds with like the story stuff and, and i guess i could tell you why uh i guess i will tell you why um is it spoilery no 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 uh, the story stuff it seems fine I, it, i'm not loving it which makes me kind of uh some of the outside the combat stuff a little tedious because i i just want to get to the combat because i'm not super invested in the story yet and i think one of the reasons why i'm not super invested in the story yet is I, I'm really irritated with the fact that you, you're playing as a silent protagonist. Oh. I think it's really hurting the story because you're like an important character to the story. Uh, or or you're, you're part of a, a this police force or this, uh, this section of the futuristic police force called Neuron that has the ability to control these demons, right? Wait, how does, this, how does a silent... How does someone who doesn't speak investigate things? Um, with their eyes. Well, he just... They, 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 it's, How do they interview it's, it's more like the director's cut of Blade Runner as opposed to the theatrical release. What do you mean? They just don't talk to themselves. But they talk to the people. Yeah, well, other people... T so so there's uh, the other members of, like, Neuron and stuff, they'll talk to you as as y'all, like, are investigating together, but early on in the story, something happens, and you basically become the only person who can control the demon anymore. So now you're kind of, like, running solo, I guess. Uh, at least where I am, I'm at in the story. Here's the frustrating part. Part At the beginning, you choose between uh, one of t these two uh, twins, right? One's a dude, one's a chick, right? Obviously, I choose the lady, especially Obviously. because I knew there was going to be, like, customization and stuff, right? But... The one you don't choose because is a character in the game that you spend a lot of time with, and they totally have a voice. <laughs> but I chose the lady, so now my brother is like this interesting oh. character, and I'm literally a nothing character. And I wish I almost wish that I chose the dude just so just so the cool cop lady would be the actual character. That's, it's it's frustrating. That's a weird problem to have. Yeah, because but. they this the actress. The voice actress for this character put in a lot of work, recorded a bunch of lines, just not in this playthrough because I am her, which makes no sense. Ah, oh, it's frustrating. Huh. <laughs> so, I don't know. It just seems, it's like a bad choice. I don't get it. Because in a game, you know, where there's a lot of voice acting, to have a silent protagonist seems strange in this day and age, you know? Uh, I think I talked a little bit about this when I talked about Tales of Exilia 2, right? Which is... An RPG series where there is so much talking. And to have a silent protagonist, which they've never really had in the series, seemed like such a strange choice. I've heard it, it described as, like, it seems really weird to have a character action game with no character. Because Platinum Games are known for having these larger-than-life characters. These personalities that, Bayonetta, that suit their Joe. gameplay, you know what I mean? They're doing flashy moves, but it's, like, theatrical and crazy and cool. And this is... It's just not there, and it's like, why did you make this choice? I don't know. That seems so. I was really giving like 
this game looks like it has a lot of style to it, and like that. Like, I've always liked platinum games, action games. Yeah, I was on the, I was, I was this close to going out and, and picking this up. Not that I need hmm. anything else to play, well. but I was like, if I pick this up, if I if I pick this up, any chance of me playing Fire Emblem is done. But it's gone. Okay, well that's weird that you have to. I mean, like, I'm too, just, but I guess you can only play of, so many Japanese games. No, it's just I can only play so many games. Period, and I'm just like the one I ha- I still haven't touched Fire Emblem. Sure. In like three weeks. So, so like, there's some potential there. Obviously, a game with with uh, silent protagonists, you know, has to, you know, the the side characters and the supporting char- characters have to be really good. Which, you know, that can obviously work. I mean, look at like the Suikoden series has always had silent protagonists, but always has these great casts. But like up to this point, they kind of really haven't been there. Um, there, there are there. They did introduce this mascot character that hangs out at the police station. To I don't know, just just. I don't know. The police station has a goddamn mascot character who is another person who's played by a person who's also hangs out in the police station, but doesn't want you to know that she's the mascot. I think, but so, it, it, but you do know that. But she's but there. but yeah, you do know. It's a really fun character, yeah. and, and like and like when she was doing a tour of the police station, she kept popping up in like weird locations, and like your character kept freaking out. But it's all like she's freaking out silently because she's a silent fucking protagonist. So there's, I've seen the seeds of potential for this being really cool, both in terms of gameplay, both in terms of like character, but like some of the stuff is like initially weirdly paced. Uh, a little awkward, both in terms of gameplay and outside of uh, combat. Does it run? Does it run pretty smooth? I mean, it looks like it's. <laughs> what are you playing? <laughs> I'm for? playing it on a switch, and it's running better than control. So, hmm. well, there's uh, it's only. On, but see, th- this is the kind of thing where like it would look so nice if it wasn't just on a switch. But I mean, uh, I think it looks pretty damn yeah, good. Yeah, but it's 30 FPS, which you know most platinum games are 60 FPS, and you can definitely tell the difference. Um, with that, so it, it especially when you when you get into it into the action, it can be like really busy and and, and not a game. Maybe I'd recommend playing most in handheld mode. Handheld mode, probably play this on a TV just because how busy the action can get and you know the controller and stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, rip my pro controller. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean I need to play more. Really, that's the only thing I can say right now. But it does seem pretty cool so far. If you kind of like that. Uh, you know, Neo Tokyo sort of like look and vibe. I- I'm not really wearing my cool futuristic cop outfit, but uh, there's some cool looking outfits and stuff. Uh, I have a question Armors about the stuff. demons. Yeah, you can customize the- them too. I made it all. So blue. is I mean, is that like a thing? Like you have this one demon the whole game? Or no, like no, no. This is just one of like demons. five or six you get that play like completely differently. You get like a dog demon that you can actually like ride around and shit. You actually have Are to catch Are these like them all. progress through the story? Or like I think you... progress through the story, yeah. yeah. But the weird thing is, I, I, I tried to like maybe talk about it uh, uh, earlier, is like I've been getting like you equip skills. Uh, so like your, your demons have, have like their own ability trees, but you also equip like skills on them. Um... But but that that I've been getting through like completing like side quests like optional stuff it feels like that have actually like introduced like significant like mechanics, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is weird that you can optionally get stuff through a side quest that would you do something otherwise. like that yeah. because it, it it I feel like maybe they did a little bit of that in Near Automata as well um, where you know these chips you were getting would could be, like significantly change up the way combat works right. but you and, to, like, and and it feels it, it feels like this is happening in this game as well um, which is strange because this feels like less of an RPG and more of like a straightforward action game but it it's probably because it has something to do with the fact that the the gameplay designer on that game is the one on this one mm-hmm. so that so the skill system might feel a, l- a little bit like those chips from Automata but um man I, re- I really I remember it's like, cool. It it's took cool me like game. half my time of playing Nier Automata before I really, truly realized how the chipsets were supposed to work. Like half of the game, I was like, "Oh, I can like totally respec my character and change the way I play this fucking yeah. game." <sighs> you could take out the OS chip. Yeah. That's right. You could. It's true and die. Facts. The game was pretty fucking good. Yeah. So yeah, definitely need to play more. Um, but I'm, you said you like five hours. I'm spread a little thin. Uh, probably yeah, like four or five. Speak- but but the game is like. Like twenty plus. So. Speaking mm. of being spread thin, uh, I started another new ooh. game. Mm. Uh, I started ooh. Greedfall the other day. That finally came out. Uh, this is this is that game we've mentioned a few times over the past few weeks. It's it's uh, Eurojank. 
<laughs> I guess yeah. is, ha- is the way we've been describing it. Uh, it's from Spiders. It's so and, European, and they make you get into home a entertain. fucking oh. spa when they show it. But to here's you. the thing: like I've, been, wait, well, I want to address something. That somebody says it, it, it's kind of a lot like Fire Emblem, where you also have like a silent protagonist. Yeah, I would say the difference between that and Fire Emblem is Fire Emblem is like filled with like like colorful characters that it can it can sort of like, yeah. Overpower like balances out the fact that your main character doesn't talk. Also, in Fire Emblem, I feel like you're making a lot more like dialogue choices for when they do on your input. You do that very rarely in this hmm. game, which gotcha. is sh- uh, strange. So, sorry, Greedfall. This is the new Euro Jank game from Spiders. Yes, their last three games scored in the 50s on Metacritic. And Nick, did you know that? I did because you told me. <laughs> but this is the one to turn it around. Oh, yeah, it, it is. is. Mm-hmm. It is. It's doing well. It's it's critically it's doing well and I and I've played I've only, like I said I've only played about five hours of it I would have played more uh, I went to the movie last night and like I said that was a long movie it took up my entire evening so I didn't really get to play much is it um, is, it's reviewing well it's getting it's like a it's getting a, a lot better than their last few games it's it's, <laughs> it's significantly better I, I mean it does have um you know like it is not the most polished in terms of like presentation like some of the character models are a little awkward some of the the anim- animations are a little stiff would you say like, it's a little janky. Uh, yeah, it's a little, I mean, the, the thing is, like, in this footage here, I got, this is me venturing out into the world for the first time. Like, you spin the- cool hat. You sp- yeah, dude, all, all of the, uh, it, every, you can change out everything, and it's all, like, different. So, like, you can, every hat looks different, every, you know, coat looks different, you're changing out all the armor, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of fashion. It's an RPG. Yeah. Sure, but like not not a lot of games really let you cut. Like, there's a ton of custom. Like, I've been playing five hours, and I, and I it's mostly. In fact, last night or the night before, I guess when I, right before I recorded this, like I hit the title card in the game, and wow. but I had been playing for four hours already, and it was like a prologue. It starts was it you, a dope late title. It card? starts. You, I mean, it was not. It was alright. I mean, you start out in the city. Like, Compare its the title card to Assassin's Creed Two titles card. Well, Assassin's Creed Two is better. Okay. Yeah, but like you only have to play for like thirty minutes. Eh, sure. It's close to an hour. I want to be clear that for like the fucking title card for Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah. I want to be clear that Eurojank no. is not like an insult. No, but I mean it's it, actually it's, a term of affection for a game with a sort of different sort of design philosophy where they care less about polish and more about like doing weird, interesting. Yeah, I mean like or, like if you systems were to, like you know uh, this is not no one mentioned. Red Dead Redemption 2, so it's kind of on my mind. Mm -hmm. But, like, and, you know, I love that game. But, like, they obviously, Rockstar has a very different focus on, you know, when they're building games. If you were to play that back-to-back with something like this, it would be super jarring. Because, like, you spend a lot of time talking to people. It's kind of like, it's kind of Mass Effect-y, where the camera goes back and forth while you're talking to people. But, like, it doesn't even quite have the same level of polish as Mass Effect. But, like, so far, the voice acting has been pretty solid. Hmm. pretty damn solid and there's a lot of stuff happening there's a lot of political intrigue going on even in the first like four hours of the game like you're spending a lot of time like let me guess to... let me guess it's a staple for euro jank rpgs lots of factions there are factions yes. all right yeah in fact the first uh the first thing you do in the game or the first op- i guess optional mission you have in the game is to go uh meet all of the ambassadors for these different uh factions in the city before you're you're all supposed to jump on this boat to go explore this island because they think the secret to curing this like disease that's like plaguing their town is is hidden somewhere on the island. Syphilis. So you you are setting off to go explore the island. So the, like the, the title card happens when you finally board that ship and you're crossing, you're you're setting sail for the island. Do you do you float across to the island or ford the gap? I'm sorry, what? Ford. Was that a Nolan joke? No, I think it was. It um, so yeah. Ask me questions, Brad. I know you. Okay. Th- you've played a lot more of these kinds of games than I. This is. I'm sure oh, there's a boat. This is kind of outside of my wheelhouse. I'm, as far I'm as... sure it's a boat, right? Yes, it's a boat. It's a boat. It's a hey, ship, guy. actually. In fact, the UI they make is a so, point. Like, they make a point terrible. of uh, like your character calls it a boat, and the guy's like, "It's a ship. It's a ship, actually." Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess, according to the UI, they've played like Destiny and Assassin's Creed Origins and all that. Because what the fuck. <laughs> Wait, why do you say? Why are you comparing it to Destiny? It doesn't have a cursor. If that's what you're. No, I mean, I get these. Maybe not. Destiny. You're not floating these around. These big with a colored boxes, you know, with like the big chunky numbers, you know, that's that's sort of like a modern. Yeah, I mean, like you know, a lot of copied UI. A, mo- a lot of you know modern Odyssey. like modern like AAA games are going for this very like minimalistic, uh, kind of seamless like light, airy design to their UIs and stuff, and this is very chunky and. Boo. Give, give me grids with, but it's got of, lots of numbers, lots of stats. 
Well, sure. Brad. Lots and lots and lots of stats. You want me to ask you about it? I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, so okay, I'm going to ask you about it in the ways that would might get me interested in the game. Sure. Uh, how's the world and how's the exploration? So this is my first time. Like, how's the wanderlust? So here's the thing: I haven't had enough time to like really dig into the exploration because I. I just barely stepped foot in the actual world. I know it is, it's not like traditional open world. It is like b- very large open areas that are, it's kind of like Dragon Quest or sorry, Dragon Age Inquisition, hmm. where it's like big giant open areas that are, you know, with loading areas in between them. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of stuff to find. There's a lot of, uh, like, I like the thing that's drawn me to this game specifically has been kind of the art design or mm. like the, uh, like the actual character designs, like monsters and like the world itself, I think is the hats. Cool. The hats. The hats are great. If you Big like deal. hats, there's a lot Big of great deal. hats in this game. Um but are like you wearing I don't know, like, like a the... poofy tie? Yeah, dude, you got the whole shaman. This is like, there this you is go, a, man. it's like a stand in for uh Carlos is in chat. You described it earlier. It was like a, this game is like a stand in for Europe uh oh god. It's like a particular time period in Europe and I can't remember I look like an idiot now. I don't know. But the way this game is designed is inspired by a very specific time and place, uh, and it's been it was very appealing to me mm-hmm. from the beginning. And uh, Victorian, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm thinking Edwardian. Of, like Carlos mentioned it in Discord a while ago. I don't know, now he doesn't. Colon- colonial America, I guess, oh, I guess is what he said Edwardian earlier. And yeah, it, it does scream kind of colonial America. It's giving me the same like vibes I got when I was getting excited to play Assassin's Creed Three before we played Assassin's Creed Three. I know no one. I know, we know how that. you feel about Assassin's Creed 3, but like the same, you know, design aesthetics, I guess, I got are, are getting me excited so playing like this game. Um, 18th century, 17th yeah, century sure. kind of stuff. Sounds about right. So what do you like? I I remember this game being like about hunting monsters. Yeah. So like, is that what the there's these weird is? like magical creatures that live on the island that you're also like trying like while you're. You're looking for the cure to that disease, but they're also trying to find out more about like the flora and fauna on the island because they're very foreign and like alien to the people that live on the mainland. Sure. Um, so like in the very beginning, you're going to get on the ship, and it looks like the ship is coming back from the island, and like they actually tried to like bring one of the creatures back, and they thought they thought they had it like sedated and shit, and it wakes up and like busts out of the ship, and that's like the first boss fight in the game. But yeah, they're like they're like these giant like weird. Uh, treant like creatures. Mm-hmm. They remind me actually of if you've seen Brotherhood of the Wolf. Mm-hmm. It reminds me mm-hmm. of the creature in that movie a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that going on. This reminds me of Brotherhood. Yeah, of the yeah Wolf. dude. This this whole. I feel like the people who made this game were like super big. Complete fans with the overall jankingness. Yes, true. Um, but it's got. I think it's got its hooks in me so far. Like I'm really in like the combats. Actually, you, there is the ability to pause combat and do like commands and stuff it's weird though because like you could be like you know 20 feet away from an enemy that you're like locked onto and then you can tap l1 and it goes it freezes everything and you can make a command but like if you if you tap into that and then hit like attack it'll immediately open instead of running to that character and then doing the attack he'll just do the attack right there even though the guy's like 20 feet away from him it's like that kind of it's weird like i don't know what i haven't really got a feel for it yet i don't know how why people would really sold I don't, yeah, I, I don't know why people what would really choose happening? to use that method as opposed to just the act, the, the, like the actual action combat. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I enjoy the action combat quite a bit so far, and I'm finally to a point where there's plenty of stuff to fight. So, I, like, I'm just barely scratching the surface of it. But so, there's lots of skill trees, lots of different abilities. Like, I I put a point. You get one point to put into like special techniques at the beginning, which are things like lock picking and. Um, uh, balance mm-hmm. and i found like a thing like in like when you're in the city like you go up onto a roof and there's like a like a uh, a board laid laid across something and you can like if you have balance high enough you can like Walk shimmy across the side i like, i didn't have i didn't put my point into that so i was like fucked yeah and i found like 50 chests a that, real rpg i found like 50 chests that had like require lock picking of one and i didn't put my point into lock picking so i was like you don't even have one lock picking you need i know you only get one point at the very beginning and i put it into something other than lock picking what'd you put I, it into mm, i think it was you don't know shit about picking no locks. i think it was a agil- I, no, I think it i think it was agility you I fool so i know like or challenge but to it's a so foot race. Weird. It, you know, Eurojank RPGs all feel like similar to each other, and it's because so. So, like, if 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 
Japanese like Eastern RPG design, Japanese RPG design looks up to like, you know, Dragon Quest and then Final Fantasy as sort of its base, right? And kind of grew from there. And like maybe like other Western developers, non Eurogenk ones, look to like, you know, the interplay stuff, the Black Isle stuff, like Baldur's Gate, mm-hmm. you know, and, and eventually just like Bioware stuff, maybe Bethesda stuff. All these Eurogenk RPGs, they all play Gothic back in the day, and like the Gothic series is the thing they latched on to. And that's why, so all these games that these quote unquote Eurogenk games, they're mostly just like games that want to be like Gothic. So if you're if you're if you find yourself falling in love with this, maybe look into Gothic Two. That's the one that I think. That's the one. Really, that, that's the reason these games exist. Gothic yeah, Two, kind of. Um, so far, I'm digging it. So let me. Okay, I've heard of a lot of. Uh, I've heard a lot of. So far, I'm digging it from Nick over the years. I'm gonna ask you a question <laughs> straight up. I'm gonna ask you straight up. I'm gonna ask you straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Sure. Does this feel like a, based on where you are right now? Does this feel like a game you're gonna finish? Yes. Okay. Are you just saying that to save face? Yeah, yes. don't, don't 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 say that. No, I know I don't want you to say that to save face because if the answer Dude, is I no, I was real worried, man. I was real worried leading up to like the, I was waiting for reviews to drop and I was like, I know I've made a mistake, guys. I know cuz I pre-ordered this. I was like, I know I feel I feel like I just wasted my money. But but, but then but, there, you feel like you but you know, it's it. Amazon. You can just turn around and return it and get your money back whatever. I was like, you know, I I took I took a I took a risk and I did it and I played it. And it was pretty good. And the reviews dropped, and I was like, oh, thank Jesus. Like, it's got it's gotten solid-ass review scores. It, you just got to be willing to look past some of, like, the jankier shit. Like, like, what I'm ta- like the janky shit is I like... I love Two Worlds, too. I can look past the janky shit. This is like Two shit. Worlds, too, in terms of jankiness. Like, it's like... It's like you... Like, it looks... Like, it artistically, like, when you're, sit- when you're sitting still, everything looks beautiful. Like, the... Like, you... you you can hear the, the trees, the as wind blowing. I heard another so streamer and describe then, it. When he looks at the game, it looks both beautiful and terrible at the same yes, time. Yes, yes, it does. It is so weird because that is a perfect way of describing it. Like, like I said, when you're standing still, it's beautiful, and then you start to walk down a set of stairs, and like the animation for the stairs is like the characters like like jer- like they're doing this jerking motion. Like yeah. they don't quite they're have just, the animation. They're just doing right. this and gliding down yeah. the stairs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude, it's so weird. It's so weird. But at the same time, the game is beautiful. Like, I really love the way the world looks. And, like, that's... It's gonna... It's, Ooh, it's gonna what are you gonna be- play next? Risen 3? No. No, I don't think I'll be playing... This is a... this Like I said, this is a little outside of my wheelhouse. I haven't really ever let myself get into, like, an actual, like, Eurojank RPG. But, like, this might be the one. This might be the one. You I'm- know, CD Projekt... Red, My... Witcher One was a Euro jank Very RPG. Yeah. It took them some time and money to get polished enough to like sort of kick that. Uh, the yeah. By the way, I didn't realize that I was running towards those guys. They had the little red skulls above their head. That means don't he fight hit them you once. Yeah, they well, will fuck you up. Staple of Euro this... jank is like crazy, like difficulty spikes out of nowhere. Yeah. That uh, was literally me walking into this area for the first time, bearing left and then getting just destroyed. Yep. <laughs> but uh. Dude, I, yeah, the game gonna, does not care. I'm gonna stick. Around, I'm gonna stick with it. Factions. It's got. It's, it's got its hooks in me so far. You heard I'll, him. He I'll, said it. I'll talk more about it next week after I've played a bunch more. Uh, real quick aside, I finished Man of Medan. Man of Medan. I'm gonna a, play it this week. It's been a while. Man. I'm sorry, guys. It's been a while since my opinion of a game like <gasps> flipped so fast. Really? You don't like it? You hate uh, Man of Medan? Oh, no. Remember how I was shit. talking about how like like oh, it, it? It, it's it's paced really well you and like him? it takes a long time to really get going and like the shit Wait, hadn't hit the fan. Those are at odds with each other, but whatever. No, I mean like it's it it spends a lot of time focusing on character development and like setting up the story. Like I really like that. Like it doesn't just like boom like rush into it. Okay. Uh, and then like and I was like the, I was like I played for three hours and the shit hasn't even hit the fan yet, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Like the game ended and the shit never hit the fan. Like, I never felt like some shit happened. After how but, like, long? like, nothing crazy. Like, dude, like, four hours. Did you get hmm. to that boat? Yeah, I well, got to the boat. It was only and some, and $30. A few, I got to the boat. Some some shit, some weird shit happened. I finally kind of realized what was going on. And then, like, maybe this like I walked out of a door, and then I got an ending. Hmm. And I was like, and I know it's one of those Were games where, like. Were characters dying, maybe? One character died. And I know what I had to. I know what I could have done to prevent that character from dying. But I was like so, just kind of like annoyed that the game felt ended so abruptly that I was just like, "Well, I'm not gonna fucking play this again." It's definitely not until dawn. Like it tries real hard, and it like it, that's weird. Does it feel like maybe it's just kind of under? I mean, like I mean, it feels like, like if it was longer, it needed more time. Maybe? Like it needed more time to let the story like really get you. I guess I don't know. And I don't how know. much time did you spend on the boat? Like. 
an hour and a half, maybe. Uh, you know, I mean, I was gonna play it on Friday. I, I mean, mean it's Saturday play night. It. You'll, maybe you get a better ending than I did. Not not on Friday. I'm not. To be clear, I'm not gonna stream this game. Did the you te- stream this game at all? No. The teaser for the next game looked silent, like Silent Hill, like maybe almost. It's- like, it looks silent. Like, literally, the guy walks up to, like, a sign for a town, and it looks like the sign that they always show, you're welcome to Silent Hill, but it said, welcome to, li- li- what is Quiet it? Quiet Man of Madame. Little Hope or whatever. What? What is it? Yeah, Little Lost Hope. hope. I don't remember. Like, like, I don't know. Hmm. Lost It kind of it kind of soured my well, shit. excitement. So, I'm like, sorry. Blair Witch is a lot better? Yeah. Hmm. Did what, you finish if that? You, if you had to pick between Blair Witch and Man of Madan, 100% Blair Witch. Hundred fucking percent. But like for a more casual like horror night, Blair Witch is maybe Cash. a little too like fiddly and Blair Witch could actually scare you. I'm, Man of Medan, I don't think is going. I'm to I'm just looking for some you. horror fun here. Without I had more fun playing Blair Witch. Okay, but like, is I don't want to get stuck. <laughs> well, like that's part of the you know. Never mind. Yes, I finished Blair I Witch. It. Like uh, you can't get out of the forest. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to win. Blair you're Witch. you're rolling your eyes. I just at want to like experience the it. appeal of Blair Witch. Like the experience of Blair Witch is getting that feeling of being hopelessly lost in the woods. That is the experience. That's, that's what the movie's about. That is why it was cool. Like it but, did sure, that. Sure, really but well. are you looking for the way to progress? Yes, of course. Your of course. dog. Okay. Your dog is like. But it's not very like. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you're talking about like bang for your buck, I think Blair Witch is the better better buy. How deep did they get into Blair Witch lore? Okay, it's true. We talked about that last week. Pretty deep. You did? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't here. Just pretty deep. Give me the spark notes. It's pretty, pretty deep. Pretty pretty. They deep. got like up in there. Yeah. She, they had enough. People and they did not move. like the answer to that and, question. And they did some things that are like also like kind of un tapped from like the movies like yeah, fuck blair witch lore stop it no it's pretty cool dude it was pretty no. dope it was that dude that fuck you're that game was kind of unlike anything i've ever played oh horror horror wise it's pretty if cool i'm sorry so. before we get to monster hunter nolan what's up nick you mean iceborne show show us some of that sweet final fantasy 8 footage and tell us how what? you've been how you've been doing a final fantasy 8 remastered so, hearing you talk about it last week made me jump back into Final Fantasy IX I got some Switch. footage for you this week, so you can see. Show me the sweet, sweet footage. But, yes, uh, once again, it's more Final Fantasy. Don't mind that mouse cursor. For some reason, when I booted the game, every time I moved the mouse cursor to the right, the game just minimized. Oh. And so weird. I was like, I'm just going to play with the mouse cursor. Oh, on. you're clearly, pl- clearly playing in so, fast So, yeah, I, I kind of I go back and forth. So you can see an example of kind of what it looks like, because I forgot how slow this fucking game is. And even when I booted up the game to play it just now, like, and I had, like, like when I turn off the slow motion, like, you move, or sorry, the, the fast forward, the 3x speed, you move so slow. <laughs> um, and it's painful. Um, and so, uh, it is nice, especially, I mean, if it's your first time playing the game, you might not play with that on. But if you're someone like me and you play the game, probably played it twice, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's painful to kind of go back to it, just especially because... Oh you know, shit! You're at the the carnival. Yeah, the, carnival. the the festival. festival the, yeah. The, yeah, the the big parade. Yeah. Oh, um, the end of disc one. Yes. You're gonna get stabbed by an ice spike. Shh. Spoilers. Spoilers. Jesus. What is this? Final Fantasy Seven. That thing? that's the event that sort of triggered the the head cannon that uh, Squall's actually dead mm. through the story after that point. Uh, Ooh, I don't like that font. Uh, is that from the original game? No, they, they changed it. They changed Why it. do they yeah. do that? I don't know. It's, it was the same thing with Final Fantasy IX. They changed I the font. I hate that, too. that. Sorry. But but anyway, so... So, yeah. So, one of the things that that, str- that kind of screams out, and you can see it in this footage, maybe you'll see it more after this battle, um, is the the whole, like textured backgrounds that are essentially like just like matte paintings yeah and these nice looking character models on top of them yeah it really stands yeah, out it's like you're playing in an emulator which yes. is i will say your eyes do it. eventually adjust because that is exactly how they did the final fantasy 9 re, uh remaster as well mm-hmm. and like you know some of the more stylized though i feel like it gets away with it more yes than I, I, do, right. I, I do feel like the, the stylization of nine the backgrounds are usually a little more like fantastical kind of yeah. or is this it's like oh like there's a scene in this where you're in the uh the president's like room and you're just hanging out and they're having a conversation and there's like a fucking nice like a uh, couch and a desk with like a lamp do you mean on the it. oval office totes 
not the president of the country, the president of uh, the this like air. And I guess he wasn't a president. He's a Renault, Renault's dad. I forget his like title. Oh. He's like a Master yeah. Callaway or something like whatever his name is. I, I do recall. Remember. Isn't he like a military man? Something like that. Whatever. But anyway, you like in his office, and it's like, God damn, everything stands out so much. Damn, look at look yeah. at Shiva. Yeah. Um. All these character models so smooth. Oh, oh no, they are. They do look. Irving's very nice. got a baby face. Yeah, uh, they do look very nice. Um, like I had mentioned last week, I don't. I can't remember if there's any cutscenes in this footage. It's so. Uh, it's so weird because like, if you think back to like the original Final Fantasy VIII and like just how muddy the character like faces oh God, were, yeah, like I don't dude, even really think bad. I know what the characters look like looked like. But just like look look at look at look at these backgrounds like compared to like the character models. Like, like it's it's clearly just like like 360p like yeah. quality like images that's that's the problem with, these, with uh yeah with doing using pre-rendered backgrounds <laughs> and stuff like that like yeah. you can't really go back and remaster it mm -hmm. or anything i mean like, you can it's, you it's just, just have to redo all yeah, of it it's and just like, static artwork you have to redo it so yeah. like that's why when well, they remade just, Final or yeah. when they remade resident evil uh one they you know they did away like they they kept they had to redo all those, those backgrounds and shit so yeah um, there's a lot more in this game. That's oh true. yeah, there is a lot more in this game. <laughs> oh yeah, there are there are like this scene you just saw. Like you see that room once in the entire game. And what, so and someone spent weeks making. What that. I forgot the, you level up. Hey, no. What the about summons? the controversy? Which controversy? I saw some model comparisons oh, in Renoa. No. They added a little material to her shirt. Uh -huh. That censorship, Nolan. You didn't see sirens? Yeah, the they, sirens? they took. Or they her, covered up her vagina. Yeah, you can't see her pubes anymore. You know, it, it got me thinking. What about like it's in, an a, in a sequel or something? What the fuck? No, no. So it's <laughs> it's censorship, right? Yeah. And it got me thinking. Well, has there ever been like? Can you say it with a little more sarcasm? Listen to what I'm saying. Censorship, right? Because they changed it. Yeah. Censorship. Here's my question. You know, in, in like a series where they like, where they like put them in like skimpier versions of sure. the outfit, like sure, know, like sure. fucking Soul Calibur or something. Sure. Is that like clothing censorship? They're censoring the clothes. Since they're hmm. they're taking away, no. like some of the clothes that were there before, it's censoring the clothes. No, but here's like, the problem. like there's no advocate for the clothes. No yeah. one right. That I mean, but that's a good point. Wait, it's not though, about because, advocacy, like, Nick. Because because like the the argument is being built on the fact that like we're censoring an artist's work. Well, an artist worked on the clothes too. That's a yeah. fact. So if exactly. You're just, if you're cutting clothes off to you're show more censoring the skin, clothes. You're you are you are yeah. modifying that artist's yeah. work. Yeah, this isn't about for women. political reasons. This is not about women. It's about the censorship. It's about the cones. Yes. I'm sorry. The what? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pauly uh, Shore. Yeah. <laughs> um, you said the cones. Yeah. <laughs> That's not Pauly Shore. A little Parks and Rec here. It's a Parks and Rec reference. Well, it's I, been the cones of Dunshire. Come All on, right. Brad. Well, I feel like referring to like tits as cones is like a very poly no. thing. No. <laughs> we got a we, we got a very clear line cones. drawn in the sand now between th us and like our like <laughs> that defines our ages. Yeah, we right. We got that the... different, you dumbass. I could I've seen Parks and Rec. You made a poly Shore reference. I would never do that. You've seen those movies too. Have I though? I don't know if Nick has. I do, I've, I know I know who Polly Shore is. You never seen Encino Man? Ooh, no. Never Encino seen Son in Law? No. In the Army? Biodome. No. You're just a bad person. I think I've seen Biodome. You you were of age to watch those movies. Oh, you William chose Atherton is in things. Biodome, the yeah. dude from the first Ghostbusters. Yep. The Anyways, dude. he's like he's like the head scientist on the Biodome. I'm mm -hmm. against clothing. Oh, shit. you mean uh, uh, Walter Peck Walter from Peck, Ghostbusters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The guy with no dick. Yes, the guy with no dick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, I totally forgot you'd level up the summons individually. Yeah. Oh my god, you could also miss summons if you, you don't draw them so, out. Yeah. Th oh like, my god. So yeah, that was the thing you just saw me in that in that fight. Okay, I did. I draw a card. I draw. I drew Dude. carbuncle. I missed from Siren in my first playthrough of this uh, game, yeah. and I never forgave it. Man, yeah. stupid game. Siren's that's not you just right. hit fucking That's tr why you don't like Final Fantasy VIII. That's true. Because you didn't get the sexy but summon. Yeah, you'll see me right here doing what I get to do in this game. Is drawing becomes irrelevant. Because you can just fucking draw the shit out of, like, magic from an enemy now. Because yeah. it's in fast forward. Yeah. So you're just like, draw, 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 yeah. draw. And now I have a shit ton of that magic yeah. and I don't have to yeah. worry about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, because you'll notice I'm playing at, you know, 3x speed. If you, I think maybe in, like, a battle after this, this next one, I turn off 3x speed. Mm. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, I feel like it's... maybe they I've need like two using X. It. I've resisted I feel using like 2X it. Two X would be the compromise. Oh uh, no, dude, three X is so fucking good, man. Mm. Like when 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 it's like wow, dude, like when when I'm when you're in battle, like it kind of doesn't fucking matter. Don't get me wrong. For some of the like uh like the bigger fights, the boss fights, I have it off. But if I'm just kind of running around, or if I'm grinding or doing something else, like the like, there's no point in having it go at you know regular speed. And yes, I I do I do I could see the benefit in uh, having adjustable you know speed, yeah. like how you know I would like, probably use it more in nine if it wasn't three times. Mm -hmm. Um, but oh, I it think, does help I, me grind a lot. I think they simplify it by just giving you the option to have it on or off. Yeah, you know, like emulators, you can kind of like fine tune that. You can kind of be like, ooh, I want it to be just about here. Yeah. Uh, but I think this they just simplify it being like, eh, it's either three X or nothing. I like how they're probably not even going to bother to remaster. Well, why would they remaster seven considering they're remaking it now? But yeah, they're but definitely they, not going to. They've... Well, like re remastering wouldn't help at all. No, but they've <laughs> already <laughs> done that with seven a little bit, right? Like like that that one that's on Switch and PS4 and all that stuff. It's a little, you know, it's got like the speed up, right? Yeah. And and, and it's, it's got slow. like some retouched models, I guess you could say, right? A little bit, right? Right? Which one's up? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think they did that much. And to well, they definitely HD fight it a to little. To, to Zlade and Chat, they have already remastered nine. I'm Correct. Fact, I'm playing it right now. But I'm saying nine is no different than like what they did with seven, right? Uh, nine is pretty much what they did with eight years. So they didn't, haven't done much to any of these. They just redid the character models on the cast, basically pretty much. Yeah, right? Pretty much. Uh, I think. I think they probably touched up some of the enemies. How much? Uh, 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 have you played more cards? Um, a little bit, a little bit, not too much. I, I got to the, I got to the, I forgot how fucking nitty gritty it is. And mm. that, like, there's a lot of RNG when you're in new areas and you have to, like, fucking adjust how the rules work and shit. And like, oh, well, if you go to this town and you play against this person and then you go over here and do this, there's a 30% chance that it will abolish the random rule in this area. There is a reason why I had a guide for this game. Yeah, I forgot day. how, like, in-depth it is. Um, like trying to, cause like random is the, is the rule that like, you don't get to pick the cards you have when you go into triple triad. And that's like the most bullshit fucking like rule that exists. Um, that one and, um, uh, I forget like difference or whatever, where essentially the only cards you win in battle is if you flipped it or not. Yeah. Meaning if an enemy flips yours, they get it. Even if you win. And that's such fucking bullshit. Yeah. And and so it's all about trying to trying to get those rules like got get get rid of those that we don't have to deal with that because if I, I win believe... battle you don't fucking get my cards fuck you I can't believe your footage is a sewer level well you know what Brad this is where I was at in the game I know but this is like the but thing that makes me never sewer. want to play a JRPG ever again and <laughs> I also get lost in here because I forgot you can take those spinning it's a sewer wheels level it's not honestly not that long once you realize you got to take those wheels to get to the next area it just took me forever to do it because the problem is and this is one of the problems when you're playing in fast forward like the window where you can interact with things you kind of run tight. right past it yeah um, god and, and so I even though I was fucking tapping like X or a or whatever I wasn't quite right there and so I think it's not until I turn off the three X that I realize oh yeah you got to take these wheels to jump up to the next level to get to the next area they should let you control the speeds I, I would set like outside of battle to 1.5 and in battle to like 2.5 or something. That would probably be good. That'd be cool if you could make separate you, settings you at the same time. You could do that time. in Fail Seal. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> Ooh Fail Seal. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be a mod for the game that allows you to do it. Because once again, all literally oh, you're all... you on PC, right? Yeah. Literally all this is is adjusting the frame rate. That's literally all it's doing. Uh, and so you'll see I just turned it off to kind of figure out what was going on. And that's when I, when I oh, I can jump up here. Does it speed up the music though? No. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because most games uh, don't actually account for that. They speed up the music too. No, nah, I'm pretty sure nine speeds up the music. Really? Yeah, it does not in this. They 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 got that figured out. I guess nice. it's just like a because like that like, would be reason enough for me to not use it in eight because the soundtrack's so damn good. Oh no, yeah, it's great. Uh, that, I don't even me. understand like. There's some non-Euclidean shit. No, it is. It <laughs> is, and it's confusing. And what happens here is, like, accidentally, I'm like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to go up this ladder, and then I accidentally, like, interact with um, that, and now I'm fucked. Wait I can't minute. get back How? down. <gasps> so I have to literally have to run through the entire thing again. You saw me in my frustration kind of oh, run back no! and forth. But thankfully, once again, I can turn off battle, so I don't have to worry about it, because otherwise I'd be constantly in and out of battle. Yeah, no shit. Anyway... Um, it's still Final Fantasy VIII. I'm still enjoying it. I'm getting a little more out of it than I think I did when I was like yeah. 15 or 16 or something playing this game. Um, 
I don't They're know. Solid how... remasters. I enjoy. I'm in, I'm still really enjoying nine, even though I'm, I don't have a ton of time to play it. So mm -hmm. I do want to jump back into eight because this game is also pretty damn. Good. It is. It is very good. Cool. All right. Uh, hey Nick. Yep. Here it is. Where it Why is. Why did he say uh oh? Uh oh. I don't know. He's a well, bitch. The reason I haven't played more than a handful of hours of uh, Astral Chain is because I've been also playing a handful of hours of uh, Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter World. Also a game that I'm not like super far into. I thought um, people, so people were really excited for this expansion and I feel like yes. it just kind of came out and then I, maybe I just haven't been paying attention to the right places, but I feel it was just a very quiet release. Uh, I didn't even realize it was out until you said you were capturing footage for it. Well, so I, I, I think maybe that is because uh, Monster Hunter Iceborne is sort of the, uh, what is tr traditionally called the G-Rank uh, version of the game. The But it's an expansion here where you go to like a new setting and stuff. And uh, here's me fighting a Bonvara. But um, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing for this entire footage. I, mm -hmm. I didn't even mean to fight this thing. Delightful. I, 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 I I was like, here's what I'll do. I'll just, um, very early on in this expansion. Uh, it's quite needy. But, like, you're uh, uh, not, like... I was like, I'm going to record footage of just kind of where I am in the story, and I'm going to go with these NPCs, and we're going to stumble into a new monster, and you're going to see, like, this cutscene, right? I don't even know what it is, but it's going to be, like, good for footage because you're going to see the cutscene and stuff and the introduction of this monster. And I was like, cool, and I got it. I was recording footage, and I got to it, and it's like, oh, my God. It was like, it was like a poison, like... Like uh, what I don't know what they call it. it's a, like a Toba Kadachi from like the original game, but it's like a, a poison version. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fight it, and then it touches me, and I'm like poison. I'm like, oh god, I'm not prepared for this, and I'm dying of poison. I don't have enough anti like anti venom and stuff, and it's like this is terrible footage. I'm just running and desperately trying to like you did craft like anti poison shit, and I'm like, this is awful footage, and, and I, I end up uh, carting and I'm like eating mushrooms with my mushroom answer to kind of like get all buffed up so I can go back and fight it again, and I'm like, oh god, this footage sucks, it sucks, and I run out of my camp and this thing appears, and I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I'll just fight this for the footage. So that's what I do. Um, you pull a Nick and you fucking captured you well it, it's footage. just funny because monster hunter is all about preparedness right yes and i was and not prepared not. at all for what i was about to fight fucking poison so how are you um, enjoying iceborne uh well so like i said this is the g rank or whatever in this game they call it master rank so this is a uh it is a step up in like difficulty over the main game, it's actually designed to be played, um, you know, after you've beaten so you're the main your, game. So your character and, over from the main game, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not only are you car carrying your character over from the main game, you can have a fully decked out, like, in-game, post-game set. And even that is probably not, like, good enough to start fighting the stuff you fight in Iceborne. Mm. In terms of, like, the... the equipment tier yeah. like early on when you unlock master rank you can start like making equipment that gets you there that gets you way up there in defense and stuff to be ready to fight this stuff but what i'm trying to say is that you need to be prepared and ready for this or you're going to get your ass handed to you and you you have to have played through that original game i think well enough you have to be good at it um, because it's designed to be like a post-game expansion and i think maybe the reason you're not hearing as many people talk about it is because because of the nature of that, right? It's not really designed to be new pe people friendly. Yeah. You know, it's designed for experienced Monster Hunter players. And that portion of the audience is probably just smaller, right? Yeah. Like, this was, this blew up very big, you know, early on. But, you know, how many of those people actually got to the point where they're ready to play this expansion? Probably a lot smaller. Probably. Um, so I'm enjoying I'm not it. ready to play the expansion, bro. <laughs> No, you're not. Um, it's funny because I was talking to David and he was like, oh, I'll play Monster Hunter with you. And I was just like, I mean, you, that's not really going to work, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, Let me stop you there. Yeah. And then he was like, come play it on Xbox and start <laughs> over. And I'm like, fuck you. Uh, so I, I love this this new setting, this new ice snow setting. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Although you got to drink hot drinks and stuff because, you know, the weather. Um, with your calico. Cool. But yeah, like tons of new monsters, variations on the old monsters, returning like past favorites from the series, like really nasty fucking monsters and stuff. The problem is, is I've only fought like a few of them because I just haven't had too much of a chance to play. But uh, with this new expansion, they added a bunch of new moves and stuff with for each of the weapons. So like 
depending on the weapon, either has like new modes or new techniques and stuff, and that's really did, cool. Did every new weapon set get like a or correct a new, correction a new set of stuff? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like, I guess the main new like mechanical thing that they added for this game is this thing called the clutch claw, which I'm not very proficient at yet, especially because it's hard to use, especially with the lance, because it involves the slinger, which the slinger is a thing that you'd you you kind of put your weapon away to use. I think I'm trying to do it here, and like with the lancer, you're like a tank, and you're very rarely. You know, it, it, you're kind of staring the monster down, and you're not really like putting your weapon away, running and diving as much, right? It's more yeah. about blocking and countering. So I don't you really use the slinger as much, and I, I know there's a way to pull it out, but it's kind of clunky. I'm just not proficient at it. But I mess around with it with the hammer and stuff, and it is this really cool new mechanic. It's basically a grappling hook. You could just grapple onto the monster if it's not enraged. Um, um, you know, if, if you got a good like flinch on the monster, you can like grapple onto it. Um, with this thing anytime you want and uh when you're up there you have like there's various things you can do you can like create a weak point like jump to a certain part of the monster create a weak point uh by attacking it it's like shadow the colossus shadow the colossus and then when you jump off you'll start doing a lot more damage to that like part of the monster so is, is, is establishing a weak point kind of like stabbing it and like giving it like an open wound that then becomes kind of. like a kind of so does that mean that you can use that to set up like when you're trying to get specific pieces of yeah. material from a monster I'm you're like yeah. i gotta target the head put a weak point on it so that i'm more likely to get like i'm pretty the sure that that, that is I exactly need. how that works with so, certain weapon types that's I use the really hammer fucking and the lance, cool and that's how it works with the hammer and the lance um now the the thing is you also have this ability to change the direction that the monster is facing while you while you, you grapple on you can hit a button to change the monster that the the the, the direction, uh, the direction, and then like <laughs> unload all of your slinger ammo and like to do like this like really powerful attack that forces the monster to like run in that direction. So you can like latch onto it, like f make it face a wall, and then like unleash all your ammo and have it run into the wall, and knock it itself out, and you just jump off and just start fucking welling. Could you out. have it like run off a cliff? Yeah, but like, yeah, you, you, exactly, run off a cliff, run running into traps, traps and stuff, yeah. run down a fucking avalanche, which there are, those exist in that game. I, I think we actually both fall down an avalanche pretty soon. Um, so yeah, like it's a pretty cool new mechanic that I, I guess I heard the developer describe it as. Uh, the, there's a lot of. Um, uh, not really waiting around, but you're more at, at at the kind of the whims of the animations of the monster, right? And it's more it's more reactionary, right? The monster's doing this, so I'm gonna do this. While the clutch call kind of makes puts you in control of what the monster is doing at, at any given time. Mm. So it, like it's kind of a new dynamic, and I really want to get better with it, especially because like with the hammer has like 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 its new mechanic is that. At the end of its big like charge hammer combos, you can like at attach like a new part of the combo that automatically like flings you onto it with your clutch claw. Yeah. So you're like ending like every combo with you on the monster doing these huh. clutch claw attacks, which is really fucking cool. That's cool. Like, it was, that minute, a minute ago when you like latched onto it and he was running through the woods and shit, I was like that gave me like Shadow of the Colossus vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And, and it's a it's a much more direct way of like getting on the monster as opposed to the mounting, which was sort of like this invisible meter that you kind of had to had to you know uh, to to like uh, lessen the like deplete or whatever before mm -hmm. you can like mount a monster. Um, so like it's been really really fun. Now I, I it's hard though. So like I kind of wanted to get out of the habit of using the weapons I was good with and learn some new ones, especially because one of the new modes for like the longsword is like a katana style like sheathing and like unsheathing like mode and yeah. stuff and like that stuff seems really fucking cool and they have it to where like if you do a perfect counter like while you're like unsheathing or whatever you like won't take any damage you'd like a really powerful counter attack and that stuff just seems super stylish but since it's been very difficult and since i've been playing solo i've been kind of sticking to my tried and true which you know i'm, I'm pretty proficient with the lance i guess the the uh the thing is I was intending to play it solo, but I've been talking to a community member, and I'm I'm gonna be streaming some co-op tomorrow night. We're gonna see how that goes. I, now I this is the, literally the first time I've ever played co-op in Monster Hunter World, oh. uh, so I'm worried that would... I'm worried that I might get hooked on it because honestly, these games are best when you're playing with other people. I mean, and this was already your game of the year when it, it was already my game of the year, like yeah. for sure. Like I, I love I love Monster Hunter. I love this one for sure. All the changes were great, and uh, this this seems like a really 
fun meaty expansion the story's cool the new uh hub that you get is really cool there's a new cat chef Mm -hmm. and uh she's really great i I think i showed her at the very beginning of the footage but like i said that footage involved a very bad situation versus a poison monster and it was not going well um i don't know it looks cool yeah it's cool Uh, maybe real quick just while we're before we end this, if he could skip to the very beginning of this footage, I, I have the cat chef. Go to the very beginning and we could see that cat chef. Show us the cat chef. Are you sure? Very beginning. It's not letting you. Okay, fuck it. No, Didn't work. I got it. Oh, he's got it. Let's see that. Let's see that beautiful. This is not the beginning. Okay. I see a cat. That was, that was a different recording. Never mind. Abort. Monster Hunter World Ice Sport. It's really cool. Check out my stream tomorrow. We're going to be playing. I'm going to be playing some co op with Wendell Fur. Oh, so you're just spoiling. I thought you were yeah. going to say. Mm. Well, I didn't want to say because I don't want people bugging him saying, can I get in on this, buddy? Um, I think we're going to do duos because I want to bring my Palico. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that, yeah. Tune in tomorrow night, Friday night. That's the 13th. Mm, Friday the check 13th. Check that out. Friday. Ooh, Friday the 13th. Ooh. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're going to board. Like where, where, where do you have to be to start Iceborne? So if you were already fighting Elder Dragons, you could get that Guardian set that they give you when you when you buy the game, and you'll probably be ready to to play Iceborne. Especially because one of the things you could do what, is once what you unlock, hunter rank were you when you started? Hunter rank uh, I was forty, but that's because I didn't do like a lot of the post post game stuff. Like I've never fought a Devil Joe. I I only fought a couple of tempered monsters. Like I pretty much just beat the final boss. Played like another few hours and then stopped. That's kind of where I am. Yeah. Okay, so so and, and when you unlock the the hunt the master rank for like all the areas, which is like way harder, you can like mine like bones and like and like uh, the crystal shards or whatever, mm-hmm. and like make a set out of that that will get you there. So yeah, cool. It's cool. It's real cool. Fuck. All right, let's take a quick break. Can we come back? We, oh, can I, I have one more game? Yeah, it was on the dock. Yeah, uh, I have. Yeah, let's just. Yeah, you have another game too. Briefly, but we'll we'll do you first when we come back from the break. We have a couple more quick games to mention, and then we'll do some news, some questions from our supporters on Patreon and Twitch. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. I assure you, we'll be back in just a second. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Before we jump into a whole, whole, there's not a whole lot of news to talk about tonight. But we do have some questions, but before we do that, Nolan, you finished a game. I did. Which game did you finish? Tell us about it. Tell us all about it. Tell us those lies. <laughs> uh, yes, I finished playing Telling Lies. Um, I was had waited for. A did you finish? I saw credits on Telling Lies. Okay. Did you? Um, That's kind of how I felt with Man of Madame. I was like, well, I saw uh, credits. So it's I, over. I was obviously, like I said, I was playing it with Bernadette. So I mean, I was kind of. She's been going back and forth between Dallas for work, and so finally that, this week we spent some time. We we finished the game. Yeah. Air quotes. How how do y'all play? Uh, well, you start up the game. No, no, no. <laughs> like, I've had a. <laughs> what? When I started playing Telling Lies, I'll be like, all right, I'll control. You take notes. But then, like, so my wife's like diligently taking notes, and then you fuck it. And then after we watch a video, I just like type random shit, and she just gets so pissed off because she has all these notes. And like last time we were playing, she like blew up. She's like, "You have not looked up any of these words." Well, if you if you look at the notepad that's on the table next to Nick, <laughs> that is so. Uh, those are all of Bernadette's notes from telling lies. That but, is so Brad. Sorry, not you... the whole notebook. Come and man. I'll just type like boobs like as a joke, but then like actual videos will pop up and I'll like, well, I gotta watch these. There could be boobs in them. Well, yeah. So, I mean, what were what, there? What generally happens is yeah. when, when Bernard and I are playing it, anytime something important, keyword, something like that, she'll write it down. Uh, if there's a person, she'll kind of maybe write down like a short description of them. Yeah. Then if anything from that video led to something that it's on the top of my head, I'll search it real quick. But then if that kind of leads to a dead end, I'll be like, hey, all right, what keywords have we got? Because you wrote them down and then memorized. And then we can kind of go through that. And so we'll scratch off the ones that we, we, we go through. So that was kind of how we did it. 
We it sounds have like a list of like hundreds of words that we haven't searched half of them. It sounds, it sounds like Brad needs to work in his his. Well, uh, the, 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 the the problem with telling skills. lies is you get very like. In, I mean, the, these videos are very long, but but then Dude, you, some of them but are then like, you have to find like, like the other half minutes. of the video. Yeah, yeah. To, there's one because the, the the thing is like Brad's, a lot of them are side by side conversations, like two people talking to yeah. each other. But when you watch one, you don't get to see the other conversation, so you have to find keywords in this one to find the other one. And then if it's like a ten minute conversation, mm-hmm. now it's a twenty minute conversation because you have to watch each half. Yeah. Generally, what we did was we would fast forward through the second one uh, because we kind of got the gist of it. We were just looking for keywords maybe that the other person mm-hmm. said. So, I, but you're can, like watching whole videos. Can, yeah. Okay, yeah. can I say, did you install insane. that mod? Yeah. Did you install that I mod? I never did, oh. no. Well, shit. So I got to a point where I, I think I can like end it, but we're not satisfied, right? It, you know, it's kind of like her story, I guess, Correct. in a way. Now, it it's sort of like, we, I feel like we got to a conclusion with like a couple of characters, but then there's like one character who like, it doesn't feel like it ties into the other characters and it's like, well, I guess we got a conclusion, but like, what was going on with Did that you other credits? character? No, because we didn't actually. We didn't want. Gotcha. We gotcha. Didn't want okay, to gotcha. It. Gotcha. But see, so, yeah, I, mean, hmm. I don't know. I started playing this game, uh-huh. and it's like There's I, a, I don't under like I don't I I can't like I don't care enough about the videos to like try to want to like re- rewind them all the way because a lot hmm. of times you'll like go through the process of rewinding like a six minute video and then a lot of the conversation will be someone staring at the screen going yeah but you gotta scrub yeah. you gotta scrub for sure well, yeah, scrub, but no, no 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 i i really i disagree with that and everyone's complaining about it and the steam form everyone's like oh my god this is horrible like you gotta like rewind it takes forever to rewind all the way like why do they design it like this is well, like so man, i things, really think you just got to use the keywords one of the one of the yeah like so, i really think you just so, gotta like not worry the, about the runtime of a video the game literally tells you to do that it yeah. tells you not to rewind i've been playing like that and it's been like the problem a really is, smooth experience like everyone's rewinding and then getting mad yeah. that they have to rewind is it just because like because like our natural inclination is when you want to watch the whole thing because it's like but the whole here's a five minute video and you want to see the whole, the whole video point of the but game though is you find those key words and you start jumping around and kind of linking them and is this what like the that. developer when you, says when you put yes and that's what the game said Dude, literally it's like in what, the game it's what the mechanics of the game are telling you in the game's instructions it's like don't the, rewind like, video like the fact that the fact that they made it so arduous to rewind through the video should be telling you like yes. this is wrong yeah like it, it, it like because when you type in a keyword and it pulls up a video, it literally starts like on the sentence that that word is said. Yes. Oh. But okay, well, the problem so if it's is an eight like, minute video when they say that sentence in like minute seven and thirty seconds, you're only going to watch a thirty second. People video. are like, "What's the rest of the video?" And they exactly. Like, they want to rewind, but literally rewinding it does it at like three triple speed. Dude, so a seven minute video like would take a good fragmented. like minute and a half to rewind. If you did not watch like more of the video, yeah, but I feel like if I was a detective way trying too to fragment it, that's the fucking point of the game. I feel like if I was a detective or something trying to figure out like what's going on in a mystery. Uh, just to figure out what's even going on, even the point, I would want to try to, like, watch as much of it as I can. Yeah, but I think by investigating, you you keep coming back to the same videos, different points yeah. in the same video. That, that's kind You're of not just, like, throwing away so, the other six minutes and 30 so, seconds of to, that seven-minute To add on to what Crispy's saying, at no point in time when you watch a video can you not go back to it. You can go back at any point in time. So I think the point is, is you're supposed to, yeah, the... you're supposed to jump around finding those key words, finding those key phrases, finding those key things that because the thing is, you don't know who anyone is when this starts. You don't know yeah. anyone's name, which you don't is know a weird, anyone's... like yeah. And so, sort of removed six hours later, thing. all of a sudden, I know who all the characters are. I know what their goals are. I know what their objectives are. I'm seeing sort of. like crazy. I fucking jump to a random video off a keyword, and I'm like, what the. Fuck is going on here? Like, because, which is cool. Yeah, but, no, it is. Yeah. And and so you know, like I said, I did I feel like credits. there's too much though. No, no, and, you and, feel, and I like feel there's overwhelmed because you're doing that. Yeah, that's huh? true. You're doing that thing. That's why it feels like it's too much. No, no, no. Because I, I no, I feel overwhelmed because I know there's so much more that I'm not watching, unless I rewind. Right, like I don't know what's going on. I just want to figure out what's going on. And you're telling me just to watch little pieces of videos, like, like keeping everything I've watched just like floating around in my head already feels like too much. To know that I it's only that's... like parts of these 800 fucking videos is like 
First of all, there's not 800. Yeah, but but, but there's so much dead, useless like time in each video. There is. There's a decent amount. Like, all right, let's let's kind of. This is turning well, into a yes, debate. Exactly. You scrub through that. So hold is, on. So let me see. Like I said, right. I did finish the video. Um, at the end, it does kind of give you an overview. Um, it it kind of tells you, oh, here's a bunch of the key words that you did. Um, so the uh, reason why they added rewind, just to answer a few people in chat, is because you're supposed to kind of scrub the immediate vicinity of like correct. the topic that you're searching for. You're supposed to go like you know 30 seconds, maybe a minute on each side of that, not like spend five minutes rewinding a 10 minute video. Correct. Yeah, which is so not how we played it until we installed that mod. Yeah. Anyway, that's fine. So at the end of it, um, it, it kind of gives you an overview of you know all the stuff you saw. You can, Brad, after you see credits, keep going. It's not like the game ends. You pretty much pick up yeah. you know, the button you're talking well, about. There's more than one ending. Correct. You pick up from where you would have pressed that button. So you can kind of, if you don't feel bad about finishing uh, the game. Were you satisfied with the ending? Um, there's more. What than one is ending. an ending? And the, the yeah the, the problem is it's like her story in that. I ended the game, but I it tells you um, I watched uh, 80 videos, uh, over six hours of footage. Um, the most so you get an ending kind of based on the character you've spent the most time with in the game. Yeah, um, I watched uh, just under two thirds or maybe under half of that character's videos. Holy shit. Um, from what I kind of Googled around bit, like there's over 180 videos and I watched about 80. Damn. Can I say this? A lot of content. I am. Yes. (laughs) Fast. I loved her story. Yeah. And I am fascinated by like the mechanics and how the story is told as like a story in a video game meeting, uh, medium. It's, Utterly fascinating. Mm-hmm. I find the story itself like not all that interesting, at least not from what I've discovered of it so far. Which you know, I'm at a point where I could end the of game telling lies of telling lies. I, I, uh, and maybe even a little her story. I don't know. I think the story I want Sam Barlow to make cool. a horror game that, that plays like but, this. But Brett, I, oh yeah, I, I, that I, would be amazing. Be oh my god, like Brett, haunted video. Games. Brett, I will yes. say, I will say Ooh. that up like about an hour. Before I finished this game, I was running into new characters I'd never seen oh, before. Fuck. Yeah. Like I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" <sighs> like I did a bitch? search, and you see that thumbnail, and I was like, "I have never seen that thing, that person before in my life." Yeah. And so I, I'm like, "Well, fuck." Like, now let's go down this rabbit hole of this character I've never seen. I got before. to a point that feels like a pretty hard end, and I feel like maybe it's not a hard end, but I, I, I'm trying to poke and prod that. Because I know there's got to be more. Eh, mm-hmm. I don't want to say what I. All right. Well, anyway, seen, but, yeah. I finished it. I, I I will agree with you, Brad. That to an extent, I think I liked her story a little bit better, just because the story itself was a little more succinct. Yeah, it yeah. was kind but of. It's so fascinating these videos. But and yes, dude, the both sides. Yes, yeah, kind of how that works. Scrolling and, through it, you can click the text and mm-hmm. search. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, so, no, smart. I, I, so I, smart. I did like this. Some of the twists that happened in this kind of threw. I like, I, like me and Bernadette kind of you know sitting yeah, up on the edge yeah. of our seat, like, oh shit, this what is going be, on here? This game must be so hard to write. Oh, probably. My God, it yeah. must be so hard. I'm to so write. curious program. how they actually filmed it. You know what I'm saying? How they filmed mm-hmm. that one on that one sided conversation? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you can't hear any of the other side. So was it just them watching reading like the other a, side. a yeah, like reading? Like Yeah. But wh- how do how do they know exactly how long to leave the gap? Or did the other one have to kind of I like, think they're having they the conversation, have... they just mute it. I think that's not I don't think feasible. Yeah, I don't think uh, that's cool. No, I mean they're just like they probably record the whole session and then when Another actor is recording their part of that conversation. They say they they watched the first part mm-hmm. and say like, okay, well she gives like you know thirty seconds to get through this line here, so you just yeah. make it work. Anyway. That's called acting. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, telling lies. It's a pretty good game. I I would recommend. I think I'm I think I'm gonna give this one a try. Robin actually. You brought, don't think there's I someone thought... with a script just on the other side of that person just reading the lines? No, that's, no. yeah, I think that's what's going on. Oh yeah, that's no, what I thought you were on. no, no, I thought you were saying that they're like doing a Skype call. No, 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 no I'm no. sure there's I'm sure there's like a fucking director or producer right there on the other side of the camera feeding them their lines. For sure. But how do you... How no, do you... reading... I'm saying... I think there's someone with the script reading the lines of the other person. That's, that's what, what I'm... Yes, yes. that's oh, okay, what I'm saying. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Okay, that's okay. what I'm saying. 
But I was just they're saying, reading the other character because they're was, having. A I was just saying, audio wise, it's not like it's silent when they're not talking. You'll still hear them making noises and moving and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, maybe so they're maybe they're audio they're... processing. I mean, a lot of that shit. A lot of what you think is wild sound is ADR anyway. No, I'm sure it is. I'm sure a lot of it is. Yeah. ADR. Yeah, it's fascinating. Robin actually brought this game up the other day. I mentioned to her once, and I thought she just completely like wrote it off and forgot it. And then she was mm. like, "What about that game you were talking about?" I was like, "Why oh, haven't you played? Ooh, you play it. Do it. Perhaps I will." I um, all right, so let's let's get on to the news. Uh, there's a couple of things we wanted to mention. Um, not a ton of stuff this week, but a ton. Nick TGS I know is happening. TGS is happening right now, um, and apparently, any we're actual not- news out of TGS? I don't know. Uh, I mean, the, I think the biggest thing out of TGS has been the Final Fantasy VII trailer and the any Resi- news the, out of TGS, the Resident Evil thing. I mean, oh, I guess the Resident Evil thing's news, but we talked about that last week. Yeah, the I mean, the weirdest thing about the Resident Evil thing right now is that there's there's people playing it and it's still called Project Resistance. And Dead like, by that, Daylight. That can't possibly be the name of the game, but maybe Resident it is. Evil Resistance. I mean, maybe. I mean, that seems likely, I guess. But um, but <laughs> the thing that you wanted to talk about, Brad, is. The thing we watched the trailer for in the break. Oh, I wanted to talk about it. like it's not something worthy. Of no, I mean I'm actually more interested in talking about. it. I don't I really want to it. talk about it. But <laughs> Nintendo unveiled their new like uh, fitness peripheral for this one, I guess. And the the you know this Ring is, Fit Adventure. This is their Wii Fit board, I guess maybe of mm-hmm. the of the Switch. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing I will say right out of the gate, the Ring Fit peripheral seems like. A better idea than so the board the the Wii Fit balance board whatever the fuck it was was like so cumbersome and so like takes up so much space and it's really? just like this like eyesore. It was like stupidly successful. I know it was successful, but I'm just saying as like a peripheral thing that you buy, it was just kind of like this like horrendous thing. You, you know, it just takes up a lot of space. It's bulky and you know not particularly pleasing to the eye. Like this is this ring thing is the kind of like literally the kind of thing you can just kind of like oh I'll just set it aside or put it in a, in a drawer or whatever and take it out later. It seems a lot less intrusive maybe to your to your gaming space I guess, I guess, I guess than maybe. The, than the board. It is two pieces. Um, That's true. A piece that you strap to your leg and a ring that a squeezy ring. It's a resistance ring. You put your other Joy-Con okay. into or like a re- yeah, the whole thing, yeah. the whole point of it is to res- resist the force that you push in. Yeah, fitness yeah. through this adventure game that they've made for it, which the, like feels the, very connect, right? Yes, yes, it does. But like the actual like style of the of what's happening on the screen looks way more interesting than I think anything they've ever done, like fitness wise. Like your, Nintendo, or, yeah, or, yeah, like with any of these fitness games, I think like I, I don't know, like just the oh. way. Just the style I came up with, and like the things that have she was doing on screen. Have you played many of these fitness games? I have not because they all think they all look kind of stupid. This looks kind of fun. Uh, I mean, if you told me like Ubisoft made this game, I would not even like question that. That's true. So I don't know. I mean, I think it looks okay. It's sort of like mostly like mini games, really. But it's like yeah. you're, you're kind of fighting RPG battles, right? Instead of just following a lady and copying what she does, right? Yeah. Like, um, but like since you strap like the most thing to your games, leg, like. It showed them like running upstairs, so running you have to, like, in place, run in place yeah. and stuff, and which is always awkward. Which was but like, like, it was like they were traversing like an actual level, like like to, to some extent it was almost like platforming, but like you're physically moving your legs and yeah. having to use the ring to do different things. Th- this feels like something that would have been like made of cardboard if Labo was more successful, probably. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I mean, do you think this is something that could? I mean, I think have I, some mainstream success, you know, like these fitness products is like, a, I mean, it's a big industry, right? And I think like, it and like the, Wii, the Wii Fit board, the Connect, all that stuff was, you know, very, it was like kind of a, you know, it, it was successful even if briefly. But the thing is the Wii from the very beginning built its success on this kind of experience. Like it had mass appeal because of Wii Fit. The Switch has found its appeal. I think to, I, I I wouldn't like, say We Fit was the mass appeal. I I would say that the mass appeal. Oh, I'm sorry, was, We Sports, We Sports, We Sports. Yeah, the the ease of kind of it literally was. You just pick it up and it's fairly intuitive. Yeah. And then they added a bunch more of those like peripherals, like the We Fit. But that, you were like, seeing oh. a lot more casual people come in to Correct. buy this. The but that's Wii. because it was so easy to just pick up, as opposed to you know an Xbox or a PlayStation with all these buttons and it's kind of confusing. Yeah, this Wii was f- literally just one handed, very simple kind of stuff, which yes got a lot more kind of 
of non-gamers or casual gamers into it. But the, I feel like is, the Wii Fit board was also really simple. It, it was. It was. This, this is like you're strapping something to your leg. You're hooking on Joy-Cons. But what, but what I'm saying is the Wii right up front was very front-loaded with like a lot of casual gamers and, and like people who don't normally play games going out to, to buy the Wii. The, the Switch found success in a very different way by appealing to people who were, you know... You know, more serious about playing games. So, like, oh. you know what I'm saying. You know, I, I'm just yeah, saying, like the, the Switch has a massive audience, just like, like the Wii did. But like, it's a totally different audience than the Wii. So, I'm not sure if people are going to be running out to buy this, you know, Ring Fit adventure in droves like they were. Probably not for things like Wii Fit. I don't know. And again, I, I'll I, like I'll never forget working. The games really good. I'll never forget working. Uh, you know, at GameStop during the launch of the Wii, and like how many people came in, bought a Wii because they were so obsessed with Wii Sports, and literally never bought another single fucking. That's thing. not true. They did buy something as they bought Wii Fit. Sure. Because sure. not everyone. I, you can't. You can walk into a Goodwill in 2019 oh, and true. see stacks of them on the yeah. shelves. Yeah. You're, you're right. You're Dude. absolutely right. But like, how many people the bought Connect a had Switch that, for that kind of experience? The Connect had that same thing going that's on. True. Too. Yeah. There was a bunch I mean, of fitness I, stuff. I, I don't. I don't I'm know. Not it's not like that's the thing. You don't know until you find out if the, if people are interested in this sure, stuff. Correct. But fitness stuff sells really well, and I and I do think there's some overlap between people. The broad success of the Wii and the broad success of the Switch. I mean, there just has to be. It's not like more hardcore gamers are coming no, out I of the world works. It's it's people who are more casually into games buying the Switch. I'm because, just saying, hey, if, Mario Kart. I'm just know? saying the 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 Wii. Uh, sorry, the Wii. If you look at like the audience, and this is just me pulling numbers out of my ass based on my own personal experience and what I was seeing at the retail level and stuff, it was like if I had to guess it was probably like you know. 60 40 you know casual to core gamers playing on the wii and i think if that those numbers might be fl- flipped well, so, so what it is it's 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 the it's the 80 percent of the people that play mario kart yes. those same 80 percent right. bought switches to Here, play here's mario my kart. question for you with your i don't say you're adamant that you think the ring is going to do well oh i don't think it's i mean i i don't know uh, well so so here's my i'm thing. saying it could because it's a fitness event. the switch sorry the wii was very successful at launch this was well before the wii fit board came out I don't know how 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 long was like almost a year. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably at least before a year. the Wii Fit board came probably. out. Yeah, yeah. So it's been over a year since the Switch has come out. Yeah. It's been fairly successful. Couple years. Yeah, well, however long that's what I say over a year. Um, I know there are a large number of switches out there, mm-hmm. but a large number of new switches can't connect to a TV. Oh shit! Oh, God. How is that gonna work with this Nintendo, peripheral? What is Nintendo's oh, problem? Man, why, why did they make one that didn't connect to the TV? You can't like uh, you can't use it. You can't you, use why this you new even device. Why call that a switch? They know a it's switch because you can't attach the joy. Con- yeah, you can't attach the Joy Cons from this new one because they don't detach. Yeah. They're cannibalizing their own shit already. So yeah, accident. that's my it curiosity really is how, how how these two things go together because obviously you can't use this. With a new one, unless you prop up your your little switch light and buy an extra set of joy cons, yeah, which you can apparently. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'm like. That that seems like there's kind of a miscommunication there. All right. Well, is there any? I think we've pretty much covered it. Mm-hmm. Let's let's move on. Is there anything anything else news? I know you said you wanted to bring up one more thing, Brad. Oh uh, yeah. Are you pulling it up right now? Is that, is that what's happening? Well, the non juicy stuff. Yes, the non juicy. Uh, oh oh, real quick. Nintendo, I'm just I just wanted to bring this up because I want to get y'all's opinion on what the fuck you think it might be. Sure. Uh, Nintendo patented uh, Joy Cons that have like a hinge, Joy Cons that bend, like hmm. that can actually. Well, which bend. which part of yeah. it is bending? How, how is it like bending? Like the top third of it. Yeah, like the oh, top like third of it back? can just yeah. bend like at a forty five degree angle back. Hmm. What the fuck do you think that is, and why? It's gonna know. be like it's maybe gonna like be... like to fit into something. Maybe hmm. is it gonna be for like a uh, gun? A it almost feels like a gun. Like it's turning it into like a like a joystick kind of thing. Where you're, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. But the joystick on the right one is lower down. Yeah, it's true. I was thinking about this, and I feel like it's yeah, not possible. really like a thing they want to pursue. I feel like it's just like a patent that they like. Want they to someone sure, had an idea that like. File that away yeah, and we'll file like, the patent. Like, like they don't want... It's like, very specific, though. They didn't like want third-party people just, like, running out and, like, making it. So they wanted to get a patent on it so they could license it if somebody yeah. wanted to. A lot of those patents become things, know. though. But maybe know? down like the road is what, what... A lot of them do, but a lot of them don't. I don't know. Like, it, it's definitely very specific. 
and strange. Like, yeah, I don't know. The, like, like to the f- point where you can maybe think about the potential. Think of all the games that have been all the like would it be exciting. More comfortable well, that's what, so that's, a, that's the what left gonna, one, not the right one. Well, that's what I was going to suggest right. is maybe it would be more comfortable because if you think about it, like a you know a Dual Shock or an Xbox controller, they are they they aren't straight. Like oh. like like a excuse me, sorry. Okay, they aren't straight like. Uh, the joy cons are they they're they're kind of curved i mean obviously the the device itself is larger so it's hard to see that curve yeah that's what i'm saying maybe they would be more comfortable if there was that slight bend Mm. to them i don't know maybe a new like uh joy con grip that you can hook it onto to make it feel like a better controller i don't know it's possible let's return to this if they ever do all right one more news topic that i don't i'm sure none of y'all follow but i thought it was kind of interesting it's this new uh apple did uh, kind of unveiled like the details of their apple arcade thing uh it's Which, an interesting pricing model, also. It's an interesting pricing model. It's a subscription based thing, almost like Game Pass. It's five bucks a month, but they announced like a lot of like exclusive uh, uh, games for it, and mm-hmm. they, you know they showed some of them off, and they look like you know the, so this is kind of across like all Apple devices. You can play these games with the yeah. subscription model. If you have an Apple TV, if you have you know a Mac, or if you just have an iPhone, these games. Should, you should be able to play them on any of them. Yeah. And but some of the games that they announce are like real fucking video games, so you know, it makes you think, hey, is Apple like actually getting serious? I wrote down a few of them. Uh there's a new RPG from the uh the creators of Octopath Traveler uh, and yeah. Bravely Default mm-hmm. called Various Daylife. <laughs> it's so Where do the yeah. Various Daylife. Interesting. That's... Um, that's not a real game a new choo choo rocket choo choo rocket universe i mean i know maybe y'all don't i, I know y'all don't care about choo choo rocket because we popped it in never... briefly and you're like what is this stupid shit but choo choo rockets actually when we did like a multiplayer night it was the game where you know they're you're trying to get the mice back to your rocket ship by putting the arrows down mm. gotcha it's a it's kind of a cult mm-hmm. uh Dreamcast Hidden Gem. It's a deep sure. cut. It's yeah. a deep cut, and the fact that they announced a sequel is like crazy and yeah. cool. Um, Rayman Mini, which is a new Rayman so, game. Uh, Exit the Gungeon, mm-hmm. which is a new, I guess, uh, spinoff of it from Enter mm-hmm. the Gungeon. So, like, they had some pretty cool. Was the Splinter Cell thing I saw a joke? I don't I know about the Splinter Cell so. thing. All right, Chris Davis has confirmed it's a joke. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's interesting if they're getting serious about this. You know, it seems like they're getting actual I IP and I don't know how developers long, and stuff. I don't know how this how long this pricing model is going to last with in, in, in regards to game developers actually making a profit from these. Yeah. Because the problem is at $5 a month with – there's not like two games. There's a bunch of games. I'm curious as to, A, how long before developers are getting – a actual profit from this and how long you know at what point does this become profitable yeah i yeah, mean but there's going to be so many people who are paying i mean just think about just think about the iphone's install base alone yeah i understand i think i think if you have a, a apple product and you're not paying for this it's like you like really don't care about games at all but like you know even even the most casual people in the world will go on to like the app store and like buy that's some different. random game that's different from i know lots of people who download free games or like dollar games or something but this is like a five dollar subscription and i'm, I'm assuming mm. they're banking on you know a bunch of people subscribing doing it subscribing to it and forgetting they've subscribed yeah. to it but it's not just your phone you know a lot of people have apple tvs no, and know. it's just I know. you know I, like i said I'm they're, not they're, say- they're coming out I'm with their own control i think this is going to fail i'm saying i'm curious as to how it's going to what the status actually, of it is going to be in a year actually from what i understand is they're allowing for like support of like any controller so you could just use your ps4 controller yes they did it. they did say that, that which is that like was cool thing. Yes, you know it's like cool. with the new with the new ios coming out it will support like blue other bluetooth devices so like a dual shock yeah that's, I mean, that's the cool. thing i don't even really care about i mean i got an ipad or whatever but like if i could just play a new rpg from the bravely default guys with my ps4 controller didn't that game look bizarre as shit like like a like an art like an art style like wasn't the art style kind of a mess if i remember like i saw a I screenshot of it and i was like that looks weird i don't know and don't like know not a good way like. i don't know choo choo rocket looked pretty good all right are we ready to move on to uh sure yeah questions yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. from our supporters on patreon we and don't Twitch? have too many of them just kidding <laughs> You know, it's a good problem to have. We appreciate it. No, no, yeah, definitely. 
Uh, so are we ready? Yes. yes. We're ready. All Hit right, us, let's get to some questions from our patrons. This is the best part of the show. Hit us with these First sweet questions. question this week. Hold on. Hold on. Again, if you're a supporter on Patreon at the $1 tier or higher, you can ask us anything you want. And you're a, if you're a supporter on Twitch, you can also do so in Discord. First question from Ash. Ash. What is your most hated domestic chore? Ooh. Uh, mm. Most hated domestic chore is probably scooping the litter box. Yes. As, a, as someone who owns a cat now, uh, do not like owns it. Owns a cat? I was, do not like it. I was going to say uh, dusting. Dusting's pretty bad. Dusting's bad if you That's do why it. I don't do it. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> I don't do it, and then I look around, and I accidentally touch something, and I'm like, fuck, now my fingerprints are there. I gotta clean this now, because it looks so fucking dusty. Uh, I guess I don't like, like, washing dishes. See, I don't mind washing yeah. dishes. I'm fine with washing so, dishes. So, I'm sorry. If, if there's something I really want to, like, watch on my phone, I don't mind washing dishes, but if it, I kind of don't have that right away, the I'm actual like, act of hand washing dishes is awful to I'm, me. See, but I'm like fine emptying, with that. like loading the dishwasher or emptying the dishwasher is fine. I don't like actually washing dishes by oh, hand. I no, I, I actually think it's kind of cathartic. I hate washing dishes when I forget to change my shirt, and I like splash a bunch of dishwater on myself. Because it always and then happens. I'm like, no! it always happens. No, yeah, you hit that spoon just Day wrong. Ruined. Just like, Day uh, ruined. Day, but mine is. Um, not so much anymore, but when I was a kid, I absolutely dreaded vacuuming. Oh. I don't know. I, don't like vacuuming. I don't even really know why, only because, like, I think I just, like, it was, like, such a pain in the ass to, like, pull the vacuum cleaner out and undo the cable and plug it in and vacuum and then unplug the cable and wrap it back up. And, like, as a kid, I just remember being like, ah, kill me, kill me, kill me, because that was, gets- like... One of my main chores. You know what gets house. me through vacuuming? Because I feel the same way about the actual act of vacuuming. What gets me through it, though, is that nice feeling of, like, it's it's like when you see someone with a lawn that's, like, yeah. overgrown. And you're like, I just want to mow that. Yeah. I you like, can, like mowing You can edge. see, like, the clean spots on the on, on the floor. It's, like, it's really, it's really nice. I like that. If you're letting your uh, floor get to the point where it's so dirty you can I have see... Still, I mean, it's you know, okay. I, I usually vacuum on weekends, so like I every gotcha. Saturday or something. So like, there's cat hair. Everywhere. We we oh, also gotcha. in my parents' house we had carpet that like kind of just like showed a lot of. All right, we gotta move on, guys. A lot of so questions. Like, a lot of it questions. felt like I was never getting it. All clean. Next question from Burnsy. You're a new fish in a dangerous prison. What's your first move? Um, kill myself. <laughs> like an actual Jesus fish. Christ. An uh, actual fish? I mean, probably, like, go to my cell. Uh, maybe, like, maybe um, get Don't you gotta, like, beat up a dude who, like, looked at you funny? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what they say Is that the your movies. first move, Brad? Because I don't see you doing I've, that. I introduced myself with a smile and a firm handshake. <laughs> Let's introduce myself as tribute. Is that what? Oh, uh, God. Dude, you know, I don't... Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess around. Like, I'm not like, yeah, I'm, know. I'm in no position to like assert myself as like a leader. <laughs> you know, he's I mean, like, what he's the gonna fuck? cozy up to the toughest looking guy you can find. <laughs> oh my goodness! He's just gonna tell him how soft his butthole is. Yeah, my pink candy cane. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> I mean, I'd be uh, like, hey guys, I mean, when's dinner? There are, you know, I would just be very polite to everyone I know. Yeah, and hope for the best. <laughs> Brad hasn't answered yet. Yeah. Uh, I told you. I no, you wouldn't. I'd fight the no, meanest you looking dude. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You would not. <laughs> you don't know. I mean, that's not I a know. bad plan. Because like, there's the small off chance that you like beat him and then like. But hey. then all his friends join in and beat the shit out of yeah, you. Yeah, no, but weakness. But that's gonna happen anyways. Yeah. Yeah. If, like, if the you more can... likely outcome is that like you'll just get beat within an inch of your life and or shank. If you can catch the right the infirmary wing, or you'll be dead, and then you won't be in prison. Anymore. If you can catch the right person off guard and just do your best like impersonation of a wild ass crazy person and just make it so that everyone is officially like scared to come near you. Because you're just that crazy, like that might yeah, be a, that might be a viable thing. Act crazy, and then people are like, "Whoa, stay away from that! that stay away from that five foot eight guy." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it would be my strategy necessarily. <laughs> I don't think I could get away with size, it. I think, I think you got to bleed. All right, let's <laughs> I'd move start, on. I'd start holding my a shiv immediately. Yeah. Uh, question In front of the from uh, question mark. 
Best radio in any game. Ooh. I vote for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, is what he says. Best radio? Yeah, best, best radio. radio. I mean, I always I always think back to like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas because I, I there were so many good commercials and shit. Like I still I still have Rusty Brown's Ring Donut stuck in my mm-hmm. head. And I, I was like 15 years ago or some I shit. I love Rusty Brown. Was that wait? Was that Vice City? That was Vice City. That was Vice Vice City. City. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Vice City. Vice City had a good radio. That was a damn good soundtrack uh, and radio. You know what? I'm gonna give it to Metal Gear Solid Four because they had the iPod and like when I first played that game and I was messing around with the iPod and like one of the things on it was like the official Metal Gear Solid Four in-game podcast. I yeah. was like, "You're crazy for this one. This is crazy." Because <laughs> yeah. that was still kind of like, you know, wait, like, wh- like that was the early days of podcasts, and it's like. Like, the idea was that they were going to keep uploading episodes of that podcast to the in-game iPod. That's in crazy. In the game. Yeah. And, like, yeah, that's just Is, is it fun. weird to know that this very podcast you're on was podcasting before that even happened? <laughs> that is weird to know. <laughs> yes, that is pretty strange. Uh, oh, God, I'm trying to think of what... I, what I'm trying to think of all the yeah, games I've played that actually have radios in. There's not a, I don't feel like there's a ton. I like the... I liked how in Saints Row. I was gonna say Saints Row uh, three or four. Which one was it? Well, uh, well, I. Oh, the well, what Spider-Man. I was gonna say, I, I don't remember which one it was, but in in Saints Row, you could turn off like every single song you didn't want to hear, mm-hmm. which means I could just have the one song I wanted to hear <laughs> over and over, uh, over and over. Um. I'm trying to remember what it was. Speaking in Saints of the Row, they had you know, I literally did that, Brad. <laughs> For in, what song? In Watch Dogs. Oh, for Diane. For Diane Young. Oh, God. Uh, and that's literally the only song that was ever on. See, Beck knows what's up. Every time I got in a car, Diane Young started. What was the Every song I always listened to in Saints Row? I that's think it was uh, the... Let's see. I remember in Saints Row they had a radio that was a weapon. Yeah, that's true. That was a cool one. Everyone would like, dance. Dude, all the different, all the different oh, songs down that down they under. had for it. Like like the For minute work the dubstep no. the dubstep gun dubstep song was really cool but then when they added like the track packs later yes. and they had one that was like German polka yeah. that was <laughs> the best all right let's move on uh, next question from Metal Button so I'm curious having an existential crisis no oh, sorry curious so I'm currently having an existential crisis cool. then I got to thinking gee golly Willikers I wonder if the four player network boys ever freak out about their existence oh I mean bro God. are you like even every real every day wait what, wait what was the actual question at the end there uh, are, you, are, even are, real? are you even real but yeah do you oh. have an existential crisis Dude, and stuff? sometimes I start to think about like something had to come first right what? <laughs> I mean the big bang Wait, like, wait, 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 wait. In terms of what? Just existence. Like, Maybe you should play that Ancestors game. Maybe. Patrice <laughs> Tessalega. Are you, yeah. talk, are you talking not, about like I'm the talk- universe? Are you talking about like you? Are you talking about like the nature I'm of I'm talking about the nature of like anything. Like like yeah. when you try to think about like. The first organism that lived. Not even like, an organism. Yeah. Like what was like. The first like molecule. Yeah. But, and before that existed. Nothing. What did nothing. Nothing. But what is. What is nothing? It was it's God, something Nick. we can't comprehend, Nick. It was God. That's Go to see, church. Yeah, I mean, that's why. Go that, to church, Nick. That's Fuck why, church. like, that's why, like, the super space flotsam is like kind of a theory because they're like, where did all the stuff that made the Big Bang come from? Yeah. Well, maybe it came so, from the collapse of another universe. Mm-hmm. You know. Maybe we're just in a big marble. See, I think I thought like I thought what you were Small saying marble. is something that I think about a lot, and it's like my consciousness, right? Is like what i would say is me right when you nick are like thinking about your identity the idea of you it boils down to like your specific like the ghost in the machine right your consciousness right well why did that consciousness become you you yeah and like was it you before you were born or like is the process of you just like this elaborate trick that this meat computer played on itself into thinking that it's like a person it's the latter like like did yeah did like the 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 impulses and the and the uh and the instinct and like kind of the baser thoughts just reflect off each other and the inside of your skull so much that like it kind of coalesced into a Still higher out. awareness yeah that one wow so i don't i so don't like why are you nick henderson in austin texas like why weren't you some kid born in like slovenia or something 
It's a good fucking question. I don't know the answer to. Nobody does. What the fuck? It's called winning the the genetic lottery, Nick. Are you (laughs) saying? Ooh, let's not get into that. Are you saying I'm? Um, Well, I mean, there would have been better, but yeah, I don't think he won the lottery. He got like one number right. (laughs) At least two numbers right. Uh, I don't really have too many existential crises like that. I think any time I think about it, I kind of kind of fall into like a logic that I think makes sense. For me, more so, it's uh, I probably the worst case of imposter syndrome. Out of like anyone in the world, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I struggle. Wait, with describe that. imposter syndrome. I know this, this concept. It's when you have that feeling that you don't belong where you're at. Like ah, you yes. are like oh, underqualified for what you do. Kind yeah. of that kind of thing. Like I, I, I feel like at any point in time, my boss is going to be like, "You're the worst. You're fired." Kind of type deal. Oh, dude. You know, I I struggled with that a lot in last year. I had a real bad problem with that. Like mm-hmm. when I was on the job hunt, mm-hmm. I had a real bad problem with that whole imposter syndrome thing. And then like this year made some changes and like, I feel like I finally have a grip on that, but it's going, it's gone a little too far the other way to the point where yeah. I'm like, like none of you people like deserve to be where you are. <laughs> like, I don't have respect for my bosses. Cause I'm like, I'm smarter than you. I feel like, <laughs> like you're just kind of a dumb person. Probably. I like, gotcha. But for me, it's it's one of those things where it's like I'm I'm at work and then like my boss is like you're doing great here's a reward and I'm like what's the trick yeah. like what's going on this yeah. can't yeah. be right I, I get that a lot though yeah. where it's like oh everything like just keep working and everything's yeah. cool we're getting new sodas in the machines and I'm like oh and then you're gonna fire everybody yeah. <laughs> like, all right anyway moving on oh man uh, next question from Illumination what is love man baby don't hurt me don't hurt me no more. I think that's all right. All right, there we go. What is love? It is, um, it's a fucking trick. And it's the most beautiful trick the devil ever pulled. There we go. There we go. That's it. I think we just leave it at that. Next question (laughs) Henry Ballard. Who's that? Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> well, oh, the, that, the cat's out of the bag well, now. Oh, Whatever. Anybody right. can go on there and see it. That's what the, I'm sure. There's hundreds of Henry Ballards. No, out remember there. earlier when you were like, yeah. you were like, is it? <laughs> well, sometimes I start reading it and I think it's like a chat name. Is it Belmont? And I was then like, I re- no. And I realize it's the actual person's name. You know what? If the person doesn't want their Hen- name on there, don't put their name on. Henry there. Baby. Yeah. I, any hey. forum I'm ever on, I don't put my my real name. Even though I mean, it's not Chris hard to Thacker find turned out all right. That's true. He's <laughs> Yeah. Formerly of Kincaid, West Virginia. Or, or someone Kincaid. else took over his personal identity after they killed him because they found him, and now they're right. just living his well, life. Well, they're, they're a lot more gregarious than the old one, then. That's so <laughs> I don't know that I'm sad I about think that. I think we got, we got that was a good thing we did yeah. then. I feel oh, like anyway. if we got Chris Thacker killed, there wouldn't even be a Kotaku article. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Schreier wouldn't care. Oh, yeah. if, if we... oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. This is the let's only get... time we ever make headlines as a podcast. Podcast is like it's like small time but independent all, podcast. All of the replies on the tweet would just be yeah. who? <laughs> like, all right, let's move on. No, they would just confuse us with the German gaming group. Player four podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, and then they all go to jail. <laughs> Dude, every time we're at a convention, they're like, Oh, from Germany? And I'm like, No, no. Yes. Germany. Those who are took these our German names? assholes. <laughs> Have you ever been tempted yes, to be the German? Dude, accent? before I I've, I've been like, Yeah, yeah, totally. They fucking That's me. They fucking annexed us. <laughs> all right, moving on. Um, this week, GameStop's GameStop's stock fell more than fifteen percent, and they also announced they'd be closing around two hundred stores by the end of twenty nineteen, yeah. citing less than expected sales due to the end of hardware cycle. Is there any way to save this shink- sinking ship, or <laughs> is simply waiting till the next generation enough? If you were the CEO of GameStop, what changes would you make to ensure the survival of the company? First of uh, all, the, I, because the end of a generation—that's oh. bullshit. Get rid of all the Think Geek merchandise that makes all their stores look like complete trash. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Well, like, first of all, I don't, Brad, that gross. is where they're making a lot of their money now. Yeah, but it's so gross. I don't even want to go into a game. Yeah, style. but that's but that's that's just that's you. the only reason they're staying afloat. That that but honestly, not. like you're right. It's not like it is pretty egregious, and I think Think Geek has gone down yeah. in quality oh, no, they since they've have. acquired oh, 100%. it. It what. Oh, if you go to the Think Geek website now, it just redirects you to GameStop, and you have to use their shitty interface. It's yeah. fucking terrible. But I was employed by GameStop as recently as like 2016, oh, really? and I can tell you that of all the different like we need to save our retail location strategies they've pulled, Think Geek is one of 
the, most the more fruitful. sensical ones, sure. like one of the more like logical ones. Like when Definitely. they when they started doing like cricket mobile and shit like that. When they started like oh, dealing with like iPad, like yeah. like that, like yeah, that that company yeah. has been dying for like a decade now. Yes, they have been they've been bleeding like a stuck pig, and like at this point, I don't think there is a saving it. I don't know if oh, there should yeah. be a saving it. What if they change their whole model? And and I they feel start really bad about that because like it becomes blockbuster. Yeah, but for video games, that is exactly what's gonna happen. Probably. Um, okay. Well, I, I'm glad I wait. No, you said renting games. Yeah. Like, what if they? Oh went, no, they're gonna die like Blockbuster. No, I'm oh, saying, man. what if yeah. they? What if they change well, their whole like, model and they start rent? So it's like you pay a subscription service. The problem with that nigga is can't they, can't, they can't beat Redbox. They're gonna just be like. They're gonna be like. Also, I don't think they can. Legally they're gonna be just like GameFly, but you can walk into a store and you can just check out games, and it's like, but you have to bring one back before you get another one, or you can pay a higher price. But you and check can't, out two at a time. They that can't. Kind of thing. Yeah. Price wise, they can't make that competitive the, yeah, the, the thing is like GameStop's existence created the system of like game releases and pre-orders and mm-hmm. pricing model that we currently exist in and i don't know that anything else can like fill that void unless they're just trying to do exactly what GameStop was doing and that obviously is not a winning strategy because the whole system is fucking broken well, the, the the problem is the the system has changed I know oh, the game stop system bit, is broken, yeah. but what I'm saying is nowadays it is not just oh this new game's coming out. I gotta go to GameStop to get it because you know what? Digital. Seventy percent of the games I play now are indie games, and first of all, they're not sixty dollars; they're yeah. like thirty. And I get them that, online. So, and, and like, GameStop like I guarantee, is irrelevant to me. I guarantee that that is like much more of a direct reaction to things like GameStop. Sure. Because GameStop still very much exists in that like AAA, like we want EA, Activision yes, kind of like money. And like, you know, GameStop's not the only one in trouble. It's also those developers and publishers yeah, that are definitely. in trouble. The whole system is like rotting from the inside also, out. The biggest games in the world are free. And, That's true, uh, too. Yeah. The whole the idea you don't have to buy video games. The whole like so, I think the yeah. only way that that company is going to actually quote unquote stay afloat is if they downsize significantly. Well, that's what they're doing. I know, it is which what is like doing. The, this is the start of it, but they're, they're their comment about because it's the end of a console generation is bullshit. No, it, it, it is, yeah. You know, this is it's because they didn't close two hundred stores when the PS3. Yeah, like that's went. never happened before. Absolutely. So like they just they got to downsize and like really reconsider. The, their focus yeah. and their Where strategy. Where are we going to go to buy used games? Like, what if they even Brad got out of the new games? Yeah, we're going to go to specialty. What if they got out of the new game like... market entirely? Like, downsized significantly, got out of the new game market, and it just became like a like a used game store, like like the kind like a mom like almost like a mom and pop shop, like but on a bigger over scale. Games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's like a bigger game over games, like. Huh? New game, like they don't make all their money from new game sales. Anyway, they make it all from. Lot more free. How does the game them over? <laughs> Barely. Who the fuck knows. Uh, next question from the drunken merchant. I had a really great time playing Mighty Number no. Nine. Why? He's going to go into detail. Uh, because I was able to pick it up for five dollars. I think it really would have been awful if I bought it for twenty retail value. I also had a great time with Kingdom of Amalur Reckoning because I got it for three dollars. If God, I had paid, I paid sixty dollars on day one, I would have been awfully disappointed. Are there Confirmed. any games you guys had a lot of fun playing, but only because you got them for so cheap? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I don't. Ugh, I'm sadly uh, I, I can't. I, I, say I don't want. I don't want to do. say that there are games that I got for cheap and I had more fun with. But I guarantee you, there are games I paid full price for, and I hated myself yes, for yes. it. Yeah, you know, it's but... funny you mentioned that. Like, I was about to say, like, my answer to that question is m- m- no, because uh, I, admittedly, I buy most of my games new. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I just did Xbox Game Pass this week specifically so I could download. Gears. If they're doing a sale, it's two dollars for two months, and it come you can get Gears Five. So mm-hmm. it's like the only way I'm going to play Gears Five is if I can play. Wait, it for so you $2. got Gears Five for two dollars, two dollars, wow. and it comes with Xbox Live. It's overpriced. Uh, it comes with a two month subscription to Xbox Live. You know, you get Xbox Live with Xbox uh, Game Pass Ultimate. I think Creature in the Wild is also on Game one. Pass. And I'm playing Borderlands 3 with Robin, so like I needed Xbox Live again because I haven't had an Xbox Live subscription in forever. And I was like, as long as I can beat Borderlands 3 in two months, mm-hmm. I can get I can play Gears 5 for two dollars and I can play all the way through Borderlands 3 without having to pay that the full Xbox Live Can't subscription. Can't you just fee. system so, like, leak? Yes. That is that is one of the I few times it's ever made sense. I don't know. System link, dog. Uh, We're in two di- separate rooms, and I don't want to mess with that shit. Star Wars: The Old Republic, because it's free to play. Oh, there we go. So, 
Yeah, I mean it's like hey, I, Final I'm Fantasy playing 14 it. is free until level thirty five. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's like I, I, I yeah, and I I think I think that too would be another one. Like I don't think I'd be having as much fun with Star Wars if it was like I paid sixty bucks for the game disc and. 10 12 bucks every month to keep playing yeah. <laughs> and there's a reason why all these like you know like like playstation plus exists and you get two free games like there's g- plenty of games on there that you know i haven't played that i that i'm taking advantage of now because i have that same thing goes for the epic game store like i picked up moonlighter and uh celeste on X- on the epic oh, yeah. for free yeah i haven't played either one of those games yet but like they're in my library now and i can play them whenever yeah fuck yeah so yeah. absolutely and and companies are leaning into that for sure. Oh, definitely. Uh, all right, let's move on. Next question from Philosaurus: Favorite art style in any media? Oh shit! In any media? That's Ooh, broad. Yeah. That um, is real broad. Picasso. Uh, <laughs> that's not an art style, Brad. Picasso. Well, Picasso that is an art style. <laughs> um, I mean, the first thing that oh, I mean, this is cliche, but the first thing that comes to mind because it's just still pretty fresh is Into the Spider Verse. Oh, a pretty what a cliche! Incredible fucking art style how about hey. borderlands is stolen art style oh god <sighs> i do i do like, I do uh, like borderlands art style but it, yes i do like a uh, games let's let's look spe- specifically games that are cell shaded mainly because they generally tend to hold up a lot better they age than, better yeah, yeah they age very well like if you look at something like um Br- uh, not breath of the wild uh um, wind waker wind waker that game even if not not even looking at the hd remake on the switch the fucking gamecube game still looks pretty and i think even good. games that are that lean towards realism but also incorporate cell shading like something like dishonored mm-hmm. i think is going to hold up a lot longer than something that went that was a similar style game that went for something ultra realistic mm-hmm. and you know the disparity is different now like back in the like you know 10 years ago it was a lot different uh, there's obviously a big difference between games going for realism and how they age versus stylistic games. But like, you know, in ten years, Red Dead Redemption Two, I think, is still going to look like an amazing game. It's not going to be quite as dramatic as like looking at a game that came out in two thousand, you know, eight or something versus mm-hmm. now. But... I, I love like really like amazingly animated sprites. Um, That's a good one, now, I mean, some indies are doing it these days, and then of course there's like older games that have really great sprites. Like, I love the sprites from Final Fantasy Tactics. But, oh, do you? But, um, like, this game just came out, Children of Morta. I recommend looking at a trailer because, oh, my God, the sprite work animation in that game is beautiful. I like the sprites in Magna Carta. Mm, oh, my God. I'm gonna, Big, beautiful I'm going to name two specific examples, not, like, I don't know, styles. Okay. But uh, there is a comic artist named David Aha who... Um, his stuff is incredible not not just his line work but also like page layouts are just like so fucking cool and evocative um best example i can give you i mean he's worked on a lot of stuff but best example and it's one i've talked about a lot of times uh is hawkeye he did the first like what's his name david aha aja Uh um he did. He did like the first. Uh, I don't know, like twenty or so. Oh yeah, you've of, shown me this comic of Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just like I don't know. Like it, it, like like comics are all about trying. Yeah, yeah. Comics are all about trying to you know make make still images feel kinetic. Yeah, and, and like have motion. And I think he does that better than even a lot of other His professionals. Use of color is also really cool. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's done by a different artist. A colorist, colorists are usually separate people. Oh, um, so you learn new things every day. Uh Yeah, no, I love that. Good. And and um oh, oh fuck, what was the other Fortnite? thing? Fortnite. Shut the fuck up. Cartoony and polished. You're, oh, you've ruined it. You're the worst. God I don't know. What, what you, about Cuphead? Uh, what was the fucking thing I was going to say? Of course, Were you going to say butt fangs? No. Everybody pause for a second. No, it's I gone. Have, I have faith. It's gone. What, it? what about like Persona? That has like, so much style, so much. I think it's something that you can almost say consider cell shaded, but kind of like that kind of comic book. Not com- I don't oh. know how to describe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Did you get it? It's no secret that I'm like a big Wes Anderson fan. Oh, are so you? I really like his uh, visual style. You not get a just tattoo. not just because it's very like two dimensional. It like I. I, I hear a lot of people say that it's like very flat, but I don't think that's very accurate because like everything has such depth and things are like moving mm-hmm. in different ways to give this like real like kind of diorama look to everything. And I, I think that's I'm thinking immediately of like there's task. always a good like he does a lot of scenes that are just people standing and talking, but there's always like this really interesting it, bit of motion. It's it's on. it's never just 
a scene of people talking. Are we talking sure, specifically his like animated movies? No, and everything. Stuff? No, no, no. His, Literally his everything. like visual style. If you, if you grab any of his movies and take any kind of fucking just random shot yeah, you're from right. it, I forgot about. There's always it's always meticulously set up in mm-hmm, a way mm-hmm, yeah. that there's you can get something from every scene. Yeah. I forgot about like like even something like Life Aquatic. Life had, Aquatic, like, Grand Budapest, super stylized and stuff. So much, uh, like, uh, Darjeeling yeah. Limited, like Rushmore, everything. And yes, I agree with Moonrise you. And Fantastic Mr. Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox. That, that, that's the problem. One of one of the things I have is is a. Uh, I love dogs. I love dogs. Well, one of my coworkers, That's the same I'm always, I'm give, always giving them like kind of good like movies to watch. Yeah. And one of them, her boyfriend hates Wes Anderson films, and that like it's like so frustrating for me. And I understand that they can be de- divisive because it is a very specific art, like, art style. Bottle Rocket. I mean, his first movie is a little bit different from his more modern stuff, but uh, I, I still always, I, I love every like every one of them. Royal Tenenbaum. Yes, we've now named basically he's, every he's, West Anderson. That's, movie. that's what he's going oh, for. Did we get Fantastic Mr. Fox? We did. Okay. Okay. That was me. I got that yes. one. I think that one is incredible. Next question. Uh, all right. Next question from Thorax. Nolan, when you stopped playing Xenoblade Chronicles X, did you uh, leave off before flying mechs or after? Will you be willing to play pay full price for a if it's ported to the switch. Um, I did get the flying mechs. Um, I did. Um, I think I also got the one like transforms it like a motorcycle or something like that. Um, yes. If it came to the switch, I probably would fa- play Although, pay full price. I'd I, be willing to bet when that does finally come to switch, it won't be a full price. It, it probably like 40, 40 is what, um, I, what I, are you talking about? They, they might go for, I, don't I thought, know. We'll I thought they, everything is 60. No, all I, these ports are I, fucking I thought $60. they announced the other, back the, to my question. They announced Xenoblade Chronicles before and it was like 30 bucks. But the one thought, they just announced? I thought so, yeah. Like last week? Yeah. Let me answer the question. 30? I'm mute, I know. thought so. Am I imagining um, that? Yes, I would pay full price because I really did enjoy that game. Uh, the frustration was the fact that it was on uh, the Wii U. Um, and uh, don't get me wrong, my Wii U's right there. In theory, I could just boot up the game and play it. Yeah, uh, but fuck that. Right? Uh, <laughs> but I, fuck I, that. I, I feel like it would just play so much better on the Switch. Um, provided Nobody wants to play a Wii U. Provided they don't do what they did with Dragon Quest Builders 2, and that I could definitely see it being frustrating to play handheld when you're like maybe in the town... Uh, I think it was fifty I stand bucks corrected. when it came to new 3ds. I stand corrected. It's sixty. Uh, if you're in the town trying to upgrade your mech or kind of Thank stuff you, like Chris. that, I could see that being really hard to yeah. do handheld on the Switch. Yeah, it's very much a yeah. Uh, yeah, dual screen sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. good music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, it might not happen. I might keep. We gotta wait. It. We gotta wait for that to even be announced. Yeah, I know. For you know. anyway, uh, I hope that answers your question. Next question horse, you know. from one of our new patrons, River Plusa. Mm-hmm. I think it's supposed to be River plus A, because the A is capitalized. But anyway. Uh, guilty pleasure time. Some people enjoy making their opponents rage quit. What's one of your guilty pleasures when playing video games? If not competitive, what's something you do in games that could be frowned upon? I.e. glitching, cheating, game breaking. Uh, I don't think I have Oh, any. that is really satisfying. Wait, stuff you enjoy doing guilty in games? Ple- guilty pleasure, game-related guilty pleasure. Wait, that's the question? Yeah. Yeah. What is your, what is a gaming related? What was the second guilty? part of the question? Let me read it again. Uh, if not competitive, what's something you do in games that could be frowned upon? I.e., glitches, cheating, game breaking, rewinding, skipping to the beginning of a telling lies Shut video. Up. Yeah, uh, quitting game. Don't do that. Rage quitting. <laughs> I don't have a rage quit. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm a pretty basic bitch when it comes to gaming. Like I just. Sit down and I play it on normal, and I don't really deviate from that. I don't use cheat codes, or well, that doesn't really exist anymore, I guess. You know, and I just play the base game and Maybe finish it, move on to the next play. one. That's kind of what I do. So, you know, you're such a basic bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm the kind of person in like competitive multiplayer games who like if someone beats me and then is like shitty about it, I'll be like, God, that's so uncivilized. Where's the civility? Fuck you, that's so rude. But then if I was in their position, I would I would be teabagging. The I'm pretty, fuck out I'm of pretty them. sure. Like, I'm pretty sure you do like, that I when just, we play board games. Yeah, I just like double standard. I huh? fucking love winning, and I don't do it enough. I love know? winning, and I hate losing. <laughs> and and yeah, I've I've had too much losing and not enough winning. <laughs> So when I get a little win, I just like 
fucking become a different person, I just a fucking, monster even. I, I just say. fucking ruin it. <laughs> I, I I I don't know if this counts, but I look up like if I'm really absorbed into a game, I'll like look up stuff like online. Sure. Yeah. Like uh, like other people's thoughts and opinions on like various skills and builds and stuff, and yeah. I'll I'll get really into that stuff just to like consume it, you know. And I, I don't know, know that's that. a guilty pleasure. That sounds reasonable and perhaps even. Well, well I mean, some people game. definitely don't play games that way. Like I'll tend to like obsess outside of the game. Yeah, does that make sense? No, I, I definitely I do that as well. I'll kind yeah. of obsess over stuff. I'll I'll look up. Oh, you know what is the best way to do this? What's the most efficient way? I'll look up kind of stuff like no, that. Of a lot. course, that's because I, we, that's why we like similar games, Nolan. Unlike yeah. these philistines, probably. <laughs> uh, but I will say that the last time I guess I cheated so uh, in a game was when I was playing uh, Stardew Valley. At one point, I was kind of getting towards end game, and I was frustrated because I can't remember what it was that I needed. Um, I needed a lot of it, and it was kind of cumbersome to get. So I just opened it up the files and i found the thing and i just changed that value from two <laughs> to 100 son of a and bitch. i was like fuck this i got 100 of it uh but i mean that's the last time i like i guess cheated but once again that's not like a multiplayer game that i'm not hurting anybody except um, yourself i mean i guess um anyway uh moving on next question from white fang how do the four-player cast stay in shape exercise diet <laughs> sports <laughs> <laughs> let's break the gaming need stigma maybe Don't nerd uh, I have a gym membership that I'm using Classic once or twice a week. Gym membership. That's I'm going to the gym though. No, I know, but like, how do you stay in shape? Gym membership. You just have one. I like to. I'm I'm starting to swim again a little bit, like okay. a little bit. I'm trying That's to like something. But like, man, I used to be able to, you know, like. Swim a lot well, longer and a lot harder, and like uh, I, you, you lose that. I did like quick. 150 yard, you know, let, you know, down to the end and yeah. back, and I was like, I think I'm done. Your gym Congratulations! Your gym only has a 25, yeah. like, like, gym only has a 25 yard pool. Yeah, that's it. And I no, used to I mean, be able to go up multiple flights of stairs. There's two pools. One, the one I was in is a 25 yard. Gotcha. The other one's 50. I think so. Yeah. I would hope so. I mean, 25 is not bad. Anyway. Um, How dare you, Nolan? Yeah, I know. You're overpaying for that gym, Nick. Uh, Actually, I'm not. I run four days a week. Mainly because I'm training for a marathon, but I've been enjoying it. Calories in, calories out. Can't go wrong. I don't care about micros. Um, oh, but it's so imprecise, though. What do, you, what do you do when you can't get it exact? Like when you do make- your best. That that part stresses me out. Like the only reason I've I've never wanted to count calories or anything is because I'm like, oh, it's like I, I'm just I'm gonna spend like 20 minutes every time I sit down to eat something trying to figure out how many I, calories. No, I'm... So that that only lasts for a couple of weeks, and then once you kind of get an idea of oh shit, like that, I didn't realize that a handful of fucking nuts is like a thousand calories. <laughs> uh, it's like one of those things where once you kind of realize uh, how much stuff actually is, and oh, I have been like overeating a lot yeah. like i don't need to eat like all of that kind of type deal um uh, is good robin uh, and i are about to start well i'm she's doing it and i was like i'll do that of solidarity mm-hmm. we're gonna do a month without eating out mm-hmm. period Just, that's it and i'm so i i cut back on sodas a lot lately and then i i was craving some the other day so i bought a 12 pack and i drank like three sodas yesterday diet sodas uh those are worse. Super fucking gassy. Like the gassiest <laughs> I've been in years. <laughs> so I think it's just it, because Nolan. I think it's just because Gassing I had gas stopped, out. I had, yeah, I had stopped like drinking kind of carbonated beverages, and all of a sudden I had a bunch and just like just like tons of gas. All right, there you go. Ugh, man, I, I, I feel closer to you now. Nolan. I uh, I <laughs> everybody I, I, I play yeah. Ring Fit Adventure. Next question. I don't think you do, Brad. Um. All right, from Don Dolan. What's some? Damn, we did get a lot of questions this week. Pope-centered games you hope to see? Pope-centered games like Assassin's Creed Two. <laughs> God willing, <laughs> in the like, future. I can't wait for the Assassin. Hold the on, Assassin's on. Creed game starring the Pope. Okay, I, I think he didn't mean Pope. Okay, maybe Pope-centered. Okay, so shut up. What are some Pope-centered games you hope to see? God willing, in the future. For example, how about a Pope fighting game where you can pick? From the 266 recognized pontiffs to claim the chair of St. Peter. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, man. Does that include the uh, anti-popes? I guess, maybe. I don't know if that's there part of the 266. Yeah, there was, like, a period of time where there was, I don't know, somebody else, like, 
made a pope and then we're like no the catholic church is based here and then there was another pope they're like no i'm the pope the I, I would church i would choose here. i would choose the original pope saint peter rabbit I, w- I would consider naming this episode the anti-pope show but yeah. i figured that might cause some problems probably <laughs> i'd answer but i'd probably get excommunicated <laughs> I don't know. Why can't I, I don't it be like I am this. bread? Yeah, I can't. But I, with a pope, I can't. Say. I am pope. instead of trying to toast yourself. It's just you're a trying pope to like, like slapping around, trying to like <laughs> getting some jelly or something. Yeah. Oh, or you're trying to like make it to the holy water or some shit. You're like slapping like, the devil out of kids or something it's like, like that. Quap, but for yeah. delivering yeah. communion. Quap, but for pope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just keep the Catholic Let's just call it. Kids, it's called pope. That. Well, Quap is Quap is called Quap for a very specific reason. Yeah, the, the buttons you use. Yeah, maybe you can only use P, P and O and E. e. <laughs> yeah, P O P E. Yeah, but the the Pope is Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know what the game would be, but it would be starring yeah. Quap. <laughs> oh my god, uh, popes are stupid. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Next question. All right, next question. Ne- next question. <laughs> From Zero Skies. What was the last non-microwave dinner you cooked at home? I made a... I, I don't remember what it was called. It was like a... It was one of the recipe cards I had from HelloFresh, and it was like a spaghetti with, like, tomato or meat sauce with, like, parsley and stuff on it. So do you, you all want to hear what I did? sausage. I don't know if I brought this up last week. The last week. one we ate or made? Made. Made. Oh. Uh, do you all want to hear what I did? Huh. So Bernadette goes out of town, and I'm like, "Well, Chinese all weekend." Mm-hmm. Uh, so so uh, I had the recipe to uh, to make this Instapot uh, honey sesame chicken. Uh huh. So I was like, "I'm gonna make this Instapot honey sesame chicken." So everything goes in the Instapot fine, and I got to make my rice. And for some reason, I made double the amount of rice I meant to make. I meant so much rice to make two cups of rice. And I made four cups of rice. Ooh, that's a lot of rice. That's four cups uncooked. <laughs> that's a lot of rice. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I don't know why I wasn't drinking. I wasn't doing anything. I just accidentally was like, oh, I need more rice than normal. And I made a lot. So the next day, I had four cups of leftover rice. And I was like, I guess maybe I'll make some fried rice. Uh, so I made four cups of fried rice into what ended up being like the pot i put it on my kitchen scale and i guess my kitchen scale uh, errors out at eight pounds of fried rice you made eight pounds of fried rice um so i i had uh so i used six eggs a whole pack of frozen peas and carrots this, is, uh, this got out of hand. And so <laughs> I literally got real out of the, hand. so this was last week the entire week bernadette was out of town it was eight meals of fried rice for like four days in a row, was all it, I ate was fried. Dude, it was delicious. Oh, there we go. <laughs> because I also, it was chicken fried, because I, I took the honey sesame chicken and used that in the fried rice. So it was like a honey sesame chicken fried Ooh, rice. Oh, shit. So it was actually really good. Uh, but yeah, it was ridiculous. Do you have any leftover fried rice? No. Oh. I fucking ate it all, Brad. I told you, over like eight days. This bitch, you had eight meals. Yeah. All and right. Fried rice. <laughs> Next I think question. I've made a meal since then, but that, that was that was a big one that I, I, I made. I made a quesadilla for Henry. Quesadilla for Henry? Mm-hmm. Nice. Spaghetti. Like yesterday? I made I made grilled cheese with tomato soup because, like I said a few weeks ago, I just I mean, it's hard this. to tell, but that is a very large pot. That is a and lot it is, of rice. It is rice. completely filled with uh, fried rice. It was delicious, though. I will say, and then I had I had some of the the the, the glaze from the honey sesame chicken that Dude, I put on top shit. with uh, some fr- some sesame seeds. Should have called us; we would have come over and helped you eat all that. No, I'm glad rice. I ate it all. It was delicious. Uh, all right, so that is all the questions from patrons. Now it's time to get some, some questions oh, from man, our supporters on it. Twitch. We made it. First question this week from Junji. What's the worst you've ever injured a friend by accident? Preferably a comical answer and not too serious. I, I have an answer for this. I once, when I was younger, I don't remember how old. You killed the duck. I th- <laughs> no, well, that did happen, but <laughs> <laughs> I threw a dart. Ew. We were throwing it at darts at fences. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember how this happened. And I was young, so I'm stupid. And it let's just say it hit a friend of mine in the forehead. Oh! And it was like hanging from, hanging from his forehead. That was scary because I didn't. 
Yes, he is still alive. You know, yeah, he's, no, it yeah, wasn't your like skull's pretty thick, and it wasn't like the sharpest dart in the world. And I'm sure Nick's not the best dart thrower. What about so those it's not like he threw it at like those ninety miles darts darts kill people. Well, this dart bad. didn't mean business or anything, but like it, it was an it was it had enough of a point that when it hit him, it like left a mark and like yeah. stuck in his skin. Was it a nerf? But it wasn't like a, like one of those metal like wicked looking darts. Yeah. With like the you know it wasn't one of those. Did I ever tell you about like I went over to a friend's house once? And, like, they were like, ah, let's play darts. And, like, he literally got, like, blow darts, and they were blowing them at each other. <gasps> and I was like, peace. <laughs> and I just left. <laughs> like, I'll be I leaving I was now. like, I will have none. They were, like, laughing. <laughs> and, like, ah, you got me. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm good, man. I will catch y'all at school tomorrow. <laughs> and I just Or left. I won't. Oh, um, God. Anyway. Uh, so I also okay. shot someone in the forehead with a, B- with a BB gun. There was one time when I was a kid, I would go to the Renaissance Festival often, and I had these like cool, wicked like wooden swords. And at one point, I was playing with some friends, and my my sister was on like the other side of my friend's uh, fence, but they had like it was like a lattice fence, and I jokingly like stuck the sword through the fence and like hit her in the eye. Uh, she was fine. Man, she I really like, I came really close twice. To, like, uh, but then people's eyes out. Uh, when I was maybe seven years old, so this is not me hurting someone was someone hurting me uh, i was playing like you know swords with my friend next door oh, and her action. like plastic swords um and her sword like was like broken and so she threw it at me and i was like i'm gonna be cool and like duck under it and i ducked just low enough to have it hit me in the forehead um massive copious amounts of blood flowing from my face from a plastic sword because it was cracked and so there was like a sharp edge and it hit me right and i, I have a scar still you can see it um and then like i went running to their house i've probably told this story before uh but like my blood flew like flowing from my head onto their tile floor and then i slipped in my own blood and smacked my face on the floor um and just didn't miss a beat got right back up and kept running home um and then yeah i had to get stitches in my head and stuff like wow. that does, that's fucked up yeah. does the person have to have survived brad you didn't kill anybody Shut yes the fuck up. Well, then I have no answer. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm trying to think if I've ever, like... I'm, I'm definitely sure I probably have accidentally, like... I've definitely, like... <laughs> Crispy's over here. I can't tell... Crispy's like, well, living, can't living, that. I living can't with Bernadette that. for multiple years, I've definitely on multiple that. occasions accidentally, like, slapped her in the face or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like in bed, or I go to do something, and I turn and, like, hit her. Like, that's definitely happened, but... I remember when I was learning how to drive... Uh, I was in my stepmom's uh, Honda Odyssey, and it was one of the first. I don't know, I was like fifteen or something like that. Uh, and I go to like back up out of the driveway, so I have my hand on the steering wheel, and I go to put my hand on the uh, the oh, headrest no. to kind of turn, and I just smack my stepmom <laughs> in the face. I just went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember that nice. story. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we need to move on. But that okay. was pretty good. <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on. Next question from Beck. One clean motion, just. Yep. Uh, you're in charge of a game company specializing in lewd but not explicit games, i.e., Shin- Sinran Kagura, Akiba's Trip. Uh, what type of game do you make? What's the story for the game, and what plot reasons are there for the lewdness? What unique mechanics do you put in the game? Fully, I'd I'd make a f- full like, specifically Eurojank RPG. Mm-hmm completely serious like elaborate story with lots of political intrigue but it's in a world where clothing doesn't exist everyone's just naked well first of all it said not like explicit like a... it said lewd not explicit that uh, is not uh, maybe they've invented new underwear. is not lewd <laughs> but it's too late i've seen it all i've seen it all i've seen it all that's kind of the vibe you were giving off there uh yeah. nick what if it's something along the lines of that? Also, but mods. they have to ratify the, all of their clothing is made up of the laws that have been passed, and so they have to ratify laws in order to have clothes. There we go. So the the longer the bill or the the new law that is being passed, the more it covers. See, I I would think it'd be something more like the land is cursed, so any crops that produce textiles like cotton or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't put too much of it on your body or else mm. you will, like, catch the curse. Mm. So everyone dresses, like, in really skimpy clothing. There we go. Because they have to minimize the amount of, like, textiles that are in contact with their body. There mm. we go. Clothing censorship. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm going to call this the censored uh... clothing show. Man. How about, uh... Final Fantasy about... Tactics without clothing. 
How about uh, mount your friends with no underwear? Mm-hmm. That's not lewd, Brad. That's, that's explicit. That's egregious. Yeah, that game's already. Like, lewd. I think we're missing the point. We're like, we're that f- game already has like swinging dicks and everything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's lewd. Those aren't dicks. Those are rolls of quarters. You taking you taking the underwear away? Just all of the guys are party. only wearing that because all of their clothes are oh, in the I laundry. Guess. Those are where they keep their rolls of quarters yeah, that they use for the laundry. Yeah, we've all been there. I mean, <laughs> I wonder if anyone's ever tried to do like a super realistic mod for that game. It'd be funny. Oh god, that sounds horrifying. Do we have any other questions? Yes, we do. Uh, one more question from Marlu. If a zombie eats a brain while it's still in the skull, oh. is it a sandwich? No. No, it's not. Wait. It's absolutely Wait, crispy. not. It's the person made it is, of bread. It is, it is more of like a soup or like a stew. Yeah. Yeah. Are their ears made of bread? <laughs> yeah, he's not eating the skull. Yeah. He's breaking through the skull to get to the brain. So yeah. That's in that cool. way, it's more like, like a, a coconut? Like a kinder egg. Or, yeah, like, a kinder coconut. Egg. <laughs> like a coconut. He's trying to break open to get to the flesh. Yeah. You know, it wasn't until I was in Hawaii, the locals call it Hawaii, um, that I had for the first time a fresh coconut. And I didn't realize that the flesh inside is like soft and like supple. Yeah. I always thought, cause I've always supple. had, I've always had like, you know, like shaved coconut or whatever. Yeah. And, and I didn't realize it was, and that's it, the part that's shaved, right? The inner. Yeah. Uh, but they dry it out. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't realize that. I mean, it, so it wasn't until that, that was the first time I've ever had fresh coconut. I've never had a fresh coconut. Cause I, I, I am not a fan of shaved coconut at all. I, I hate love it. shaved coconut. Uh, but fresh coconut, I actually really enjoyed. I like a fresh drink right out of the coconut sort of thing. Well, that's what we had when we were there, yeah. Yeah. And then you crack it open and you eat the flesh yeah, out of yeah, the yeah. inside. You eat the flesh. It's kind of like a brain. You eat the uh, flesh. Anyway, that's all the questions from our patrons on patreon.com slash foreplayer and our supporters on Twitch. Uh, like Nick had mentioned earlier, every week we post a thread on Patreon. Uh, you can ask us any question you want as long as you are a patron of at least $1. And if you are a supporter on Twitch, you have access to the supporters channel in Discord at discord.gg slash foreplayer. That's the one. Uh, feel free to ask us any question you like. And before we wrap up, I, of course, want to mention our supporter spotlight. I'm going to do this one rather quick. We are running a little low on time tonight. But I just want to mention uh, thank you to our supporter spotlight of the week, who is Richard, also known Richard. as Ultimate Inferno, from Washington. Thanks, we always, Richard. We always appreciate letting us know where you're from. Um, I'm going to read his top five games of all time. I'm going to keep it simple tonight. Do it. Uh, Richard's top five games of all time. Number five, Resident Evil... Four. four. Okay, yeah, it's four. Uh, four. My favorite Resident Evil. I liked remake, but the controls in four was a huge improvement. That's, for sure. That's a pretty damn good game. Pretty solid all oh, the way around. Sure. Number four, Brad. Tales of Symphonia. The, the Crypt. Symphonia. No. no. Despairia. No. Uh, There's, There's too many Tales games. I can't let you guess. T- tell, tales of uh, the Abyss. Wow. Yeah. Actually, you got it. <laughs> Tales of the Abyss. Love the characters in this game. Was a tough choice between this or Zillia. Is that how you say it? Zillia. Sure. Zillia. Um, number three, Zone of the Enders, the second runner. Best mech game I've ever played. Everything from the story, gameplay, the and runner. character. What? Yeah, you didn't let us guess. Oh, sorry. That's fine. I would have said Zone the of the Enders. You know, I already said no, it, Brad. There's no guessing there. It's, it's always the second one. Fist of Mars. There wasn't a game third game. Yeah, there was. Fist of Mars on the Game Boy Advance. Fist of my Mars. Oh my god, we're counting that one. Zone of the Enders, the second rounder. Best mech game I've ever played. Everything from the story, gameplay, and characters was what made this so enjoyable. Number two, Brad. Final Fantasy. Mm. Eight. Crisis Core. No. It's clearly Core. tactics. It's clearly tactics. Uh, uh, has Ultima Brad. Inferno played Fell yeah. Sill Arbiter's Mark? Well, it's funny you mentioned... No, actually, never mind. I lied. I thought... I read earlier he said that he was... <laughs> but I, I was thinking to the commenter at the beginning of the show. He says, I played so much of this that each playthrough I did, I tried different team builds. I loved the class system and the map layouts. Loved this game so much after renting it once I had... Once that I had to find a copy myself. Uh, and his number one game of all time is Chrono. <laughs> it sure, it sure she ain't cross. You're right, it's Trigger. Crown of Trigger, uh, I loved everything about this game. The time travel story was just so enjoyable with a diverse cast of characters. The soundtrack is amazing. From Corridors of Time, Frog's Theme, and the Town of Zeal, uh, this game just has a special place in my heart. God, I should fucking 
play that game. And yes, Chris Davis, you did let me borrow your SNES Mini so I could play this specifically. It is still sitting in my on my shelf. I have not do plugged it. it in yet. I know, dude. When will I find the time? I don't know. Like tonight, sit down with Robin and play. Maybe she'll dude, get in. Robin there. was in bed like an hour ago. <laughs> well, tomorrow night. I don't fucking know. Tomorrow night we're preparing for Borderlands oh, Three. Shut up. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'll so. and uh, I'll just read. Uh, what is we ask? Sentinel what is a game oils. that you consider to be? Un- Wait, what? What? On the what? Games. You're gonna have. Borderland, pre-Borderlands, role-playing sex? Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. What? Borderlands <laughs> foreplay. There's no tiny <laughs> There's no tiny Tina here. Oh, no. Borderlands, oh. three well, in, three dicey. in. Uh, what is the game that you consider to be underrated that you wish more people would play? And why? And he says, it's tough, but maybe Mega Man X8. People were turned off wow. by X7. That no one really played X8, which I thought was actually pretty damn good. It makes good. a good point. Like, apparently X7 was, like, a tragedy, but X8 was actually okay. Are these the more recent ones that came out? Like, the, uh, I mean, there were no, retro ones? PlayStation 2. Yeah. Recent, okay, no, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking of different ones. I was th- those are actually, like, Mega Man... I don't remember. I don't... I can't keep track of the fucking naming... Uh, well, there's... The names of Mega Man. Mega Man, and then there's Mega Man X. He's there's pretty accurate. Also, there. Mega Man Zero. Oh, excuse me. Let's not forget Legends. All two Mega Man those. Legends. All two of them. Mega Man Battle Network. Oh, are you familiar with Mega Man Legends, Crispy? No, not really. All right. All right. Thank yeah, you. Uh, you have thank a PlayStation you. TV? I haven't, I haven't played much of it, really. Thank you, Ultima Inferno, for writing in. Of course, if you are interested in being a supporter spotlight, all you have to do is you, if you support us on Patreon at the $3 tier or higher, or if you subscribe on Twitch, you can access our supporter spotlight channel in Discord. There's a pinned message in there. With a link to a Google form, just some general questions about you and your taste in gaming, and we will pick one every week at random and read your responses. So, we got a few new ones this week. Thank you guys for those. We needed some more. Get in there and do it. Nolan? Oh, wait, no. Brad. You always start with Brad. Yes. Four player minute. Brad? Go. What's the four player minute, Nick? Hype, sweat, thank you, and fuck you, or any comments. My hype there is of... for Yakuza 7. There's a lot of new stuff coming out of DGS on Yakuza 7. Guys? You got to check it out. It looks really great. It looks really cool. Th- there's like Yakuza Kart in this game. What? Like a Mario Kart mini game. Yeah, that's what Yakuza Kart. Yeah, and they show off like, you know, a lot of more like footage, like the actual battle system from this game, which does look uh, a little bit different than that one from April Fools. Y'all got to check it out. It is it's nuts. Is it this one seems like fucking funny and crazy. Yeah, it pfft. I'll be looking at all this stuff on my stream tomorrow. My um, my my sweat is uh, maybe for Link's Awakening, the remake. You know, I saw something on Twitter today. Jason Schreier was basically saying that that whole new mode thing that they added, where you make your own dungeons or whatever through the tiles, is like awful. So you're pretty much only there for the remake of the Game Boy game, which is not like. You know, it's like shorter than Link to the Past. I I don't know. I, Link to the Past ain't a short game though. It is. Yeah. I mean, if it, you're not whatever. If you're not I mean, you, I mean, you, I played you, it for eighteen hours straight. Well, yeah, and your first thing. sitting, and you don't. Did, that don't, makes it not a short game. But you makes also it an don't really hour game. play like old games, so you were like really struggling. It, it, it's not super long. <laughs> uh, you're bad. I mean, I was. What struggling. I'm saying is, you're I did, bad. I did struggle a bit. With um, <laughs> you tried to fight. That's because he told with me the to. the fucking bug net. What's his name? Uh, Ganon? No, not Ganon. The other one. The wizard. You tried to fit the wizard with the bug net, didn't you? Oh, I think I tried to fight both of them. With Probably. The <laughs> my, my fuck you for this week goes to my Switch Pro controller, which just bricked out of nowhere. While I was playing the game, just bricked completely. Hey, you know what, Brad? Now you got a paperweight. With all um, the paper you have in 2019. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe Walmart has a paperweight. He probably doesn't have that much paper to wait. And my thank you for this week goes to Wendelfer because he kind of messaged me out of the blue and was like, hey, dude, you still want to do that Monster Hunter co-op, which is something I said before release, but I just sort of forgot about it. I got into it and I was just like, you know what? I can't deal with it. You know, I don't have time. But he reminded me like, hey, I really want to do try to do this um with some other people this time around and and if he didn't if he didn't message me i probably would have just forgot about it maybe even fallen off the game entirely but i'm excited to play some tomorrow on my stream so yeah monster hunter cool is that it yeah oh also uh my sweat is for hideo kojima because if 
if Death Stranding isn't like a ten out of ten, people are gonna be so mean to him, and it's true. I feel so bad. <laughs> he's true. he's just like this artsy fartsy dude. Let him do his weird shit. Don't be mean. Yeah, come on, guys. If you want to play, if you want to be mean to Hideo Kojima, go play Police Knots. That'll make you. Are you saying that will make you not want to be mean to him? No, it's it's pretty uh, in in this culture. Not exactly. PC. Oh yeah, I mean he is like. That's yeah no it's it's pretty it's uh, like offensive yeah. like his representation of women in pretty much all of his games yeah but like yeah, there's straight really up goofy sexual assault and police knots yes. so like mm. he just grab women <laughs> wow yeah. yeah yeah wow all right no one yeah. uh, <laughs> all right I mean, uh, that took a turn my hype my four minute four player minute starts now my hype uh, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, they've just they kind of released a big patch. A big update. Yeah, the big oh, update. Oh, you've been playing the multiplayer. So I, I so I kind of in preparation for the multiplayer because I'm curious about it. Um, I I did start playing the kind of story kind of again. I, I picked up both my the save that I had finished and kind of just doing some stuff I hadn't done. Uh, kind of exploring the world, seeing some of the like, the side missions I hadn't run into, uh, and then I did start playing the new patch yesterday. I only played it for like two hours. Uh, I don't have anybody to play with right now, mainly because like scheduling that. I don't know when I'm gonna actually play. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, kind of hyped to see uh, what's about. Might getting a little bit more into the online. We'll see. Uh, my other hype uh, is for next week as me and Bernadette's anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, I don't really know what we have planned yet. I don't know if we're going to go somewhere for dinner. Hopefully it's not fried rice. It's not going to be fried rice. Well, I'm get to it, Nolan. It. Oh, I got her a gift. Oh, but, you know, well, whatever. I think she'll like the gift I got her. I hope. If you're listening. <laughs> um, it's your dick in a box. It is not. Is that a dated... Uh, no. That's it's a reference. very dated reference. It's pretty dated. Also, I don't know if that generally... They did, like, three sequels to that sketch. They did. They did. But also, generally, Mother you Lover don't do and, that uh, with, uh, like... Like your wife. That's usually like. Yeah. Why? Why do you even? Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. moving on. No uh, box. But fuck no you. Box. Uh, goes to Amazon. Well, it's like uh, and or whoever. Uh, I I went to buy um a camel pack, camel back, whatever. Uh, bought it over a week ago. Uh, camel they said. Pack? You yeah. Smoke. Camel back. <laughs> oh. A little backpack. You put some water in it. Get a gotcha, little straw. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, vodka. One day thing. delivery. Um, it's still not here. Uh, I just checked today and Amazon was like, it might be lost. Man, they're dropping balls left and, and right. And I was like, oh, you think? You think? Um, uh, and so they're like, do you want a refund? And I'm like, not really. I want my fucking product. I bought it for a reason. Uh, they're so going to make you refund it and then order it again. Uh, probably. Just get one of them beer can hats. That's not exactly the same. Uh, and then my second, my, yeah, my second fuck you, uh, goes to, uh, my coworker. Naraj. Oh, Naraj. Big old fuck you to Naraj. Fuck Naraj. Because as of tomorrow, he's no longer my coworker. <gasps> he is he is leaving my company. Oh, is he the one that's like... Uh, he's out. So he he might even be listening right now. And if he is, fuck, fuck you, Naraj. Come on, Is man. it actually Neeraj? Pronounced like more like Neeraj? No. Neeraj? I know anyway. Naraj and he's like, it's not actually Naraj. I just tell people that. You knew someone by the name Naraj and they told you that? I'm pretty sure he was fucking with you. No, in high school. <laughs> I'm no, pretty no, sure he was fucking with no, you. No, he says it's not actually pronounced that way, but you know, he wasn't fucking with Crispy. Me. My hype this week... <sighs> should ask him. <laughs> goes for the MMO expansions I'm going to be playing next month. Hopefully. Both fucking Star Wars The Old Republic Onslaught and fucking Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. My uh, sweat goes to the fact that, like, I'm in full fucking fever pitch Star Wars hype right now, and I've got to, like, make that, I've got to keep that rolling through the end of the year. Yep. <laughs> and yep. that's going to be tough. I really uh, hope that game turns people out. People are excited the for thing. this new one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's going to I think it's going to sneak yeah. up on people. I, I was mean, like, I was like, I started watching that first trailer, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then, like. The Palpatine thing, and I was like, I hate Star Wars. <laughs> Who doesn't? Was... Are you talking about the movie or You're the game? You're talking about the movie. The trailer. For the movie or the game? For the, yeah. the game. No, for the movie. Oh my god. I thought you were talking about the fucking game. Yeah, we game. can't keep track of you. Like, Palpatine's yeah. in the game? No. Oh my god, shut up, Brad. You're... My sweat <laughs> goes to... Uh, I don't know, Brad just fucking ruined it for me. The um, Mandalorian? No, I did the sweat. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's true. Mandalorian is coming out. They also announced that Kenobi Disney Plus series. Oh, yeah, all that Disney Plus. That's stuff. kind of cool. Um, I sweat. My fuck you for the week goes to Kickstarter because apparently earlier today they fired a bunch of like high level employees for attempting to form a union. <gasps> huh. Ooh, yeah, they just like union a- busted a bunch of people, like people who had been there since. The launch of that company. That is a poor wow. move. That's yeah. a poor take. Real that is fucking, a bad take. Real fucking shitty in this day and age. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, those guys. labor laws in this country are already pretty fucking toothless. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't know. That, that's not helping anything, that's just, that, obviously. And, and like the utter irony of a company like Kickstarter, whose whole business model is in like people coming together to. Yep make something yeah yep. what like, was the company line on that one i don't i don't know i haven't seen it yet in um, it's probably bullshit whatever it is yeah they're not saying it's because of union busting obviously because mm. that's actually really illegal but mm-hmm. they can't get in trouble for it so who cares um and my thank you for this week goes to whoever the fuck got that clip from the newsroom trending <laughs> on twitter because it's been a very gratifying day <laughs> really really done it for you yeah that's so stupid but like stupid in the stupidest possible way stupid about the stupidest thing yep (laughs) oh man all right uh let's see where let's see my four player minute starts now i'm gonna do two sweats and two fucks i'm not even hyped about anything right now. maybe if it was a firefighter I, i don't know if it was a firefighter, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like an maybe. airline pilot. It's like we, like I don't, yeah, I don't. Maybe, maybe. And, and and the worst part is, is like the scene is coming to some sort of like crescendo of like emotional catharsis, and you're supposed to feel like, okay, yeah, something like is happening here. But like he still has to get in that last like misogynistic jab at the woman who was literally just doing her job. It's true, she was. Oh, what? Did, what, did, what does he? He call calls her, her Miss Crazy Lady yeah, because Crazy she was lady. like, "You can't take control of the cabin." And he's like, "I'm a white man. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Fuck you." I mean, but that's it, kind of what happened. It's not so many words. Yes. Would he? Would he? Would, would you have preferred it, Brad? No, it but that is what he said with his fucking face and his actions, Chris Davis. Wait, let's <laughs> don't don't be a All little right, anyway. <laughs> Nick, finish your uh, liquor yeah. about it. All right, let me finish. Two sweats and two fuck yous this week. First, my first sweat goes to Neo Two. That trailer didn't really do much for me. Oh, uh, you! And it's it's mostly because shit. I when they said they were doing Neo Two, I was expecting I was expecting like something a little bit more. You know, I was expecting everything in that trailer looks sick. It looks cool, man, but it looks like more ex- like it looks like it could have just been an expansion for Neo One, man. I was I was hoping for them to make dramatic changes to like the way the game like the way the game looked, the way the game was structured. or... What, Whatever, but, it just, but it the just, trailer didn't have any. I'm not saying this. The the stuff in the trailer didn't look cool. I'm gonna play Neo too. I'm just saying. But I mean, I'm saying you couldn't gleam anything as far as like I know, and that's structure. Why, or, I wish they would done have done something in the trailer that made me that that would allow me to gleam such things from it. My second sweat goes to Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm still very excited for it, but people keep talking about it and how it's like you can as long as you don't let yourself unless as long as you. Except the fact that it's gonna be, it's gonna take like fifty years for them to finish this fucking thing, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, how can I let myself be excited for something knowing that it may not ever reach its proper conclusion? I'm just not that kind of person. Mm-hmm. Like if I, also, if, does, if, without knowing that I'm gonna ever get a proper conclusion to something, like I don't, Nick, I, you realize that game's already like out, right? I know, but the fucking <laughs> you can remake. See the ending. Do, of does it. I know. does rude comment. On Cloud's eyes. Shut the fuck up, Brad. In Final Fantasy VII. This Mm. is important because I have a feeling this is like some Advent Children shit. It could be. All right. And it's like, don't do Yes, it's definitely some Advent Children shit. I haven't watched the English trailer I think it probably is. Oh, no. All right. My first fuck you goes to Man of Medan for like so swiftly just flipping on me and just making me like dislike the game. Like Mm. I was like, I went from like enjoying my time to like very quickly being like what the fuck did i just waste my last <laughs> the last four hours playing this game for i just don't understand how like i mean it's not like uh until dawn is some like fucking thought provoking like piece of art no but it it spends its time and it builds to a crescendo and it feels earned the, the, there like is no monsters crescendo. the crescendo is monsters dude but there's some crazy tense shit happening at the end of that game some intense fucking shit like i was on the edge of my seat 
at the end of that game. This until game, dawn? This game, yes, Until Dawn. Okay. Man of Medan literally just Fuck fucking Penny. ends. There is no crescendo. There is no climax. Mm-hmm. Like, in my ending, at least. Maybe if, the thing is, I just I have no desire to replay it. But so, you have to replay it to get anything more But I would more have to replay it to get yeah. anything more out of the game. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, and my second fuck you goes to Microsoft and how they uh, Xbox Live. I I you would not believe I had to. I was just trying to get Xbox Game Pass set up mm-hmm. and get Gears Five set up, and on Saturday I think it was, and I had to subscribe to Game Pass and unsubscribe six times to get it to work properly because of the way they link your Microsoft account to your Xbox Live account. Yep, and I have a separate Microsoft account for my laptop my work laptop mm. versus the my xbox where my xbox live is associated to mm-hmm. and i couldn't fucking figure out how like, i couldn't get the thing to link to the proper account it was the most infuriating bullshit gotcha you know? it took forever um and also i don't know why but i couldn't get gears 5 running smoothly on my pc hmm. no matter what i did to the settings like i was tried playing it on pc first that's one of the reasons i had to refund it because i was like i tried to do it on pc first Got through the whole process, started playing Gears 5, and it was, like, choppy as fuck, no matter what I did. So I was like, well, I guess I'm playing on Xbox, so I had to undo that and then do the whole thing over here. What? It was a nightmare. Um, that sucks. But, yeah, fuck, I can't stand the way Microsoft handles Microsoft accounts and Xbox Live and yeah, all that shit. It's kind of silly. Oh. What? This is some, I guess, last is... bit of news to end the show on. Oh, God. Um, Words. No, oh, it's not, like, serious. Sorry. I'm just looking at the MPDs for last month. Oh, Jesus, you sounded so serious. Yeah. yeah. You uh, sound like you're about to tell us that they got Osama bin Laden. They, they got <laughs> Osama bin Laden. They got him. No. Come on, shake my hand. Uh, <laughs> no, Control didn't chart in the top 20. Oh, what? Six. When did Control come out? Five days before the show. Yeah, uh, but like. So, August 20. Okay, Astral Chain was number 10, and that came out like the same day. Good oh, Lord. That's crazy. That's Fire Emblem was number four. Control didn't chart. That's crazy. Man of Medan was number 19. What? Wow. Dude, that's not a good thing a for A lot of Black Bay Remedy. fans. That's not good. Oh, what a great note to end the show on. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you guys next week. 4playernetwork.com is the website. You can find all of our wow. podcast episodes there. And, of course, join us in Discord at discord.gg slash four player and don't don't forget we are nine people away nine pledges away from doing our next project m so if you're interested in helping us get reach that goal patreon.com slash four players where it's at thank you for listening and good night peace Whoa.